steal some uh, some of my, some of my partner's thunder here, but <laughs> impressive uh, 546 yards uh, of total offense against 57. Yeah. But even more impressive was time of possession, 20 minutes and 56 seconds on your end as opposed to 27 minutes and four seconds uh, that Bandera had the ball. Mm -hmm. Talk about how how uh, how the game played out and, and what you saw. Well, I, I was uh, really pleased with how our kids uh, approached the game. You know, we had uh, placed a lot of emphasis on coming out after an open week and uh, you know executing well, not not playing a sloppy game. And uh, I thought our kids did that. You know, we drove uh, about three hours to get there. You know, handled the the long bus ride. Um, over there, you know, well, and it was a, it, like you said, it was our first district game, and that was the most important thing. And um, you know, was uh, was really pleased with with how our kids played. Um, you know, you, you talk about the yards of offense. You know, I thought that uh, I thought it was a game where you know we had many more plays where all eleven of our guys on the field uh, were doing their job. Uh, for the entire play, and and that kind of sounds, I don't know, that may sound uh, uh, different, but uh, or maybe obvious, but um, you know, offensive execution, you know, uh, really requires all eleven guys, and and if you really watch, you know, any game, uh, the you know the teams that are average have got about eight or nine doing right. Uh, the teams that are really good. Uh, and are consistently good. I've got all 11 of them doing right. And so, um, you know, we had the most plays um, that we've had all year where all 11 guys were, were really doing their job. And and uh, when we do that, we can be really explosive offense. And, um, you know, because not only in the passing game, but in the but in the run game. And, um, you know, I, I thought uh, not only did our, our uh, offensive line uh, dominate the line of scrimmage, but I also thought that our receiving core, um, you know, really dominated in whatever that they were asked to do, whether it was, you know, running routes and, and making plays in the passing game, or whether it was blocking downfield and springing our our, uh, our running backs for, you know, instead of a, an eight yard gain, maybe a you know fifty yard gain. Um, and so I thought that uh, I thought that as a team offensively. I was really proud of, of, of how hard we played, of how well we executed, and, um, uh, you know, just really had a, a dominating night on offense, uh, both running the football and throwing it. Um, you know, defensively, uh, you know, same thing. Um, you know, with the exception of the, the one drive that uh, where we gave them a short field after attempting the uh, onside kick, I thought you were trying to go Mickey Finley against Yoko. I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> you, you know that story. Yes. Okay. No, I I'm do. I'm kidding you. I do. No, uh, no, you know, one of the things was is that we felt like, you know, we had an opportunity to get a to uh, to get an onside kick early. We just didn't quite execute it as well as we would have liked to. But, um, you know, one of the things that we did do well uh, with that regard before I talk about the defense is, uh, you know, we had two two-point conversions. And, you um, uh, that the you know those were big in capturing the momentum of the game early, and uh, I was really proud of our kids in, in the execution of that. And, and uh, you know part of that's just getting out there and get lined up fast. Mm -hmm. and, and and our kids did a much better job of that last week, and it paid off for us. And, and we really were able to capture them with some momentum. But, but you know, before yeah, you uh, before you go any further, talk a little bit about that. You know when when we're on the on air and we're talking about. The extra point conversion, you know, we we mentioned the the formation that they're in, but talk about what what y'all kind of look for there when you have that thing set up. Yeah, well, we're just looking for an advantage, you know, somewhere, uh, you know, within, uh, you know, we've got uh, we've got multiple options, you know, of of what we can run, um, depending upon what the defense gives us, and so the first thing is we're just trying to get lined up really fast, you know, while they're still. Deciding kind of where a, to go. Yeah, deciding where to go, and you know, in the in the days of disappointment of uh, you know giving up a touchdown, and just trying to hit them one more time, you know, real quick. Can I ask you a question yeah. there? Do you have it by design that when you score, whoever the eleven are on the field or the eleven that are going to line up in that formation? Because if you substitute, you got to let them substitute, which yes. gives them time, right? So that's correct. It doesn't matter what whether you got. 
speed or heavy or yes. whatever you've got on the field, they know. Yeah, that's impressive. No, well, no, no, no. no. I mean, we do have a we, we have a set group that goes out. Okay, there. so you no do a, what, we okay. do substitute. Somebody okay, you, somebody. On. On. Okay. Yeah, we I hadn't paid that close attention. Uh, yes. Yeah. I have to write more when you score than any other right. time in the game, right. so I'm usually got my head down. But yes. I okay, All yes. Right. Now we do substitute people on the field, but uh, <laughs> but you know, uh, uh, but I thought that our kids did a good job of uh, of getting out there and doing it, you know, uh, at a faster pace than what we had previously done. And uh, so I, I thought those were some some big you know plays in the game, just kind of at the beginning of you know of you know creating some quick separation um, and and some momentum. Uh, and then defensively, you know, giving up 58 yards, uh, you know, was a was an outstanding performance by our defense. Uh, you know, we did give up the one drive. I thought that we were, um, you know, just a just a little bit hesitant in that drive, um, but uh, but but after that, our, our kids, you know, really pinned their ears back and and got after them, and uh, uh, they really didn't do a whole lot at all, obviously after after that one drive. And so, um, you know, overall. Uh, offense, defense, special teams, you know, it was an overall, uh, you know, really good performance and uh, it was a big first win for us in the district race. you have anything more you want to ask him about Bandera, Ray? No, I just kind of a stat we don't talk about a whole lot, but it may have been your – I could be wrong on this because I hadn't looked at it all, all year, but I know in college a lot they talk about explosive plays being mm -hmm. a play over 20 yards. You had ten. Yeah. Offensively, you had ten plays that were twenty yards. You thought I'm saying twenty yards or more? That's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot, and and that's you know something that our our uh, offense is capable of when we all um, you know are uh, are doing our job, and and uh, that was something that I I really uh, was was pleased with with our kids, and and expressed that this week that um, you know when we all are doing. You know what our job is each play. We got a chance, you know, to uh, to have a lot of big plays, and and that stemmed from how we practice. And I and I mentioned last week. I thought we had a great open week of practice. I thought last week's practice was really good. That our kids were really focused in on on uh, getting better, and and so I think it showed up, you know, in, in some different aspects of the game. And hopefully we can continue that trend uh, moving forward um, because. You know, I got. I was telling our kids yesterday. You know, this is the time of year we're starting to getting to the time of year where championship football teams begin to separate themselves in, in how they and how they play, how they execute. And um, you know, if we want to be considered to be a championship football team, um, then uh, you know that's that's it's that time of year that we begin to separate ourselves a little bit. And so, um, you know, our kids have had a great week of practice again this week. We're going to play a good football team tonight. Uh, for sure, but uh, uh, but hopefully we can continue to do some of those things that uh, we did well the other night in Bandera. Well, congratulations on that victory. Uh, like you mentioned, uh, an impress impressive win because of a three-hour drive and having the week off before. Uh, so tonight, though, you're you're back at home in the in the friendly confines of Galver Stadium, yes. facing the Lano Yellow Jackets. Yes. Talk a little bit about what uh, what you're going to face tonight. Well, number one, we're excited about being back in Quero, and uh, um, you know it's been about four weeks since we've been at home, and so our kids are excited about that, and I think our community is excited about uh, seeing our, our 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 team play in our stadium again tonight. But uh, you know, Lano's got a good football team. They uh, uh, they lost last week uh, to uh, Navarro, uh, fourteen to ten, and quite honestly. Um, you know, I'm sure that they felt like they, you know, could have and probably should have won that game. They they had the ball inside the 23 times and didn't score. And I thought that they played exceptionally hard. Uh, they played really good defense against them, um, and uh, you know, played well enough to win the game. And so uh, they are certainly a formidable opponent tonight. Um, and so I think it starts with them on on their defensive end. Um, you know they uh, their defensive front. Uh, they, for one thing, they give you a lot of different looks. Uh, you know every defense that we've seen throughout the course of the season so far, we're going to see them all in one game tonight. Uh, we'll, we'll see a little bit of everything, and so that in and of itself, you know, poses a few problems. Just uh, just because you've got to identify all that stuff and, and make sure that you know you got the you know that you block the right guy on you know whatever play is called, and so. Uh, that will be a challenge, and then then you add 
onto that the the the, uh, the effort and the motor that, the, that those guys play with um, you know will you know, is what makes them good and uh, they've got a they've got a defensive lineman number five that uh, they move all over the place uh, he's a really good football player he's created a lot of havoc for them um, and uh, they got a, they've got a you know three other guys that uh, that, are, that are good players that uh, you know uh, uh, play exceptionally hard their linebackers you know are good linebackers they do a good job of finding the football and uh, you know and they're, and they're really solid in the secondary so they're a well coached football team they're a disciplined football team they're a team that plays really hard and um, you know and, and they're a team that's got a lot of confidence this year uh, I think they're four and two now they lost their first game of the year in the last second of the game um, and you know these guys could easily be six and zero coming into this game. So um, you know we know uh, the kind of football team that we're going to face tonight is is a good one, and we're going to have to bring our best game as well. All, I'm sorry. Go I was going to ask a question when you said about the, all the multiple defensive fronts. Do you go to more of a zone blocking scheme, or do you like you call the play in the huddle, and the guys when they get to the line, they got to figure out whether they're in a Three, four, a four, three, a five, two, mm -hmm. or whatever, and it's a different blocking assignment. Or yeah. how do you do? You, how do you attack that? Well, we, you know, the thing is, is that uh, you know, when you install your offense, you got rules, and um, you, you really have got to, you know, do a good job of following your rules uh, because those rules, you know, of whatever blocking scheme that you have, um, you know, should be able to. Um, provide an answer for whatever look that you're going to get and uh, but that's easier said than done um, because you know most of the time you go into a week and you see uh, you know you might see one or two fronts so you can get you know you, know, you can get really good at you know knowing what you're going to be doing when you break the huddle almost right um, but you know in a situation like this um, you, you really got to get up there. You've got to identify, you know, uh, what they're in, and you got to apply your rule. Does somebody um, make a call for you? And who's you have? A, there's a center, or I mean, there's each guy just looking, and he knows in his head. Well, you know, everybody everybody has got their own rule, um, you know, per what the play is. Okay. So, in other words, we don't we don't identify. Okay, they're in a four three this time. Okay, they're in a three four this time. Um, we don't identify it in that in that way. It's, it's if there's a man over me, this is yeah. what I do. If there's not a man over right. me, this is what right. I do. Right, okay. right. And so you, you know, and so you you got to apply your rules. Um, and then as a coaching staff, I think you got to be smart about, you know, uh, uh, about you know what you try to attack them with. And, and I think you got to attack them with the things that you your kids are most comfortable with, and and uh, you know, in the schemes that. Uh, are are best suited to handle multiple fronts, and so um, you know th those are all parts of you know going into game uh, preparation and and uh, but our kids have handled it great this week. You know, obviously, you know uh, uh, handling it uh, speed of a game on Friday night. Um, you know, we'll see, but uh, but I, I've got you know great confidence in our kids, and I, I think that they've got confidence in what they're doing, and hopefully that translates into. To uh, you know, some some good execution offensively uh, tonight, but uh, defensively, uh, or excuse me, offensively, uh, they're a spread offense. Um, you know, they're going to get in uh, doubles and trips and empty, and they'll get into some two back uh, with three wide receiver sets. They'll get in a little bit of tight end with two two backs or one back, uh, but they're primarily a spread offense. Uh, they've got a, their quarterback is back from last year. He throws it really well. Um, you know, they've got some, uh, you know, talented receivers that, you know, just have a knack for getting open and have a good feel for what they've got to do to find the holes in the defense. Uh, they got a big offensive line. I think their left tackle is about 6'4", 6'5". Their right tackle is about 6'3". Um, they got a big center. And, uh, you know, they do a good job with, uh, you know, pass protection and uh, things of that nature. So, you know, we'll have our hands full uh, defensively as well. Um, you know, we, we've got to do a good job of, as always, we, we, we can't allow them to run the football up and down the field on us. But at the same time, uh, we got to be, uh, you know, aware of, of uh, what their potential is in the passing game because they, they do a good job of running their offense. And uh, so, you know, uh, we gotta, we got to contain, you know, uh, all of it. And, 
uh, that will be a big challenge for us tonight. But uh, uh, they they got a good football team. We got a lot of respect for them. I think they're extremely well coached. I think they play hard. I think they're disciplined. And those are the type type of teams that are, uh, you know, many times are the most difficult to beat. So, um, you know, we'll have to uh, match that, and and uh, we'll have to play well tonight. On your on your uh, board in there, in the and it, you talked about how th- this is probably the biggest team y'all are gonna have seen all year. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, I mean, is that? Yeah, I mean, uh, offensive line wise, uh, they, they you the, the, know, their defensive line doesn't look that big, but, but yeah, their defensive line isn't you know quite as big as you know maybe a couple of the teams that we play, but they're definitely not the smallest, uh, you know. But what they, but you know, if if they lack anything in size, uh, which they, which they're not small right. uh, by any stretch. Uh, but you know they make up for and how hard they play and the motor that they play with and then like we talked about you know the just the different you know looks that they can give you but their offensive line is big um, you know especially the centers and tackles your right guards pretty big right uh, tackles 270 huh yeah right tackles 270 so uh, so they've got some they've got some big guys up front and uh, you know they'll, they'll be a they'll be a load uh, for sure and so uh, quarterbacks a good sized kid. Um, so they've got they've got some size and and uh, we'll have to we'll have to deal with that. Ray, you have any stats regarding Lano? We've only played them one time in Ferris Stadium. Uh, if you're not, obviously you're listening to this tonight, you're not probably going to be at the game unless you're listening driving to get there because this is played before the game. But Travis and I joked they're the Yellow Jackets, but they're orange and black. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's not a stat. But that's, to me, if you're the Yellow Jackets, you should be yellow and black. I don't know. I don't know what goes with that. But no, we beat them 49, 49 to 7 at Ferris Stadium, I think, the by district round one year. It was, was the, it the second it was round? The area, area round. The area yeah. round. That's the only time we've ever played them. Okay. Yeah. So. Good deal. Yeah. We'll talk a little bit about uh, sub varsity and what went on last night in yeah. the well, football. Well, uh, you know, our freshman and JV games were canceled because of all the flooding, you know, that uh, has been taking place in Lano. And certainly, our thoughts and prayers are with uh, the families that have been have been affected by the by the floods uh, there in Central Texas and especially in Lano. Um, and uh, yeah, I think that their school was canceled on Monday and Tuesday, or excuse me, they didn't have school on Monday originally. Uh, that was a, that was already scheduled to kind of like us this week, um, but then on Tuesday and Wednesday, I, I think their school was canceled because of the flooding. And so, um, you know, they had a late start on as far as you know getting some practice in, and uh, you know, so they they canceled the the freshman and JV games because uh, they were just now getting you know I think Wednesday was the first day maybe they they were able to practice and then they were going to try to get some practice in. Uh, Thursday as well, but uh, so we certainly understood that. Uh, so we didn't have a freshman or, or JV game this week. Uh, our uh, sub varsities, excuse me, our junior highs uh, played Hal here last night in uh, in Gobbler Stadium. Had another great showing. Our uh, uh, seventh grade white uh, won sixteen to eight. Our uh, seventh grade green uh, won forty two to six. Our eighth grade white won as well, and then our our uh, eighth grade uh, green lost a uh, close game. It was a hard fought game, uh, 20 to six. But, uh, uh, you know, every one of those groups is, has been doing exceptionally well. And, uh, you know, we're really proud of, of the progress that they're making. I think they're having a lot of fun and, and uh, they've had a, they're having a lot of success uh, this year as well. And so, um, you know, uh, there's some good players coming. Um, you know, and, and those kids are, are representing the green and white uh, really well at the junior high level. Um, as far as uh, as far as other other things going on, we uh, our our cross country uh, will be going to the regional cross country meet early this next week. And uh, Brooke Wendell, uh, Will Green, and Cole Alcorn will all be uh, representing uh, Quero at the regional cross country meet. We wish them the best of luck. I know they're gonna do well in their quest to hopefully uh, uh, qualify for the state meet. Um, our volleyball team uh, was off this past uh, Tuesday night. Uh, they play Navarro tonight and then they will finish up with uh, Poteet this uh, this upcoming uh, Tuesday. 
and uh, that will be parents night here and here at home for the last game and um, you know depending upon how things go tonight and and uh, and Monday, or excuse me Tuesday uh, will determine where we end up uh, in the district race for playoff seating uh, but uh, hopefully uh, we'll end up you know, either in uh, third or fourth place, uh, you know, after these last two games, and uh, we'll be able to qualify out of a out of a good quality volleyball district uh, for the playoffs. The playoffs uh, won't start until a week from uh, this upcoming Monday or Tuesday. Uh, so, uh, you know, they're they're wrapping up their season, uh, wrapping up the district race, and uh, uh, looking forward to hopefully a, a playoff run uh, after that. And then our girls. Uh, basketball team uh, started up practice this week. They oh, started wow. practice on Wednesday. It was so uh, you know their season will be starting soon, and uh, boys basketball will be starting practice uh, next week. And uh, so we got a lot going on, um, but at the same time, uh, it's an exciting time, and, and our kids are are, are really doing uh, well in a lot of areas. And we've got some football weather. Got some football weather. Cool. Yeah, it's been nice. It's been nice not having uh, 100 degree weather and 150 percent humidity <laughs> this week. So it's been a change for sure. But uh, you know, I told our kids when I was talking to them about you know what I said earlier about you know this begins to kind of be the time of year that uh, you know championship caliber teams begin to separate themselves. Um, you know, it, it uh, this week has kind of seemed like a playoff week in terms of the weather outside and. Uh, you know, it kind of gets you excited, you know, uh, to to what uh, for what's to come. But uh, but at the same time, we got a lot of lot of football to play over the uh, this game and the next three weeks uh, to uh, to determine all that. But uh, sure was a nice change. It was it was cold on Monday and Tuesday. It was it <laughs> was no doubt. Ray, you have anything else? Just hurry up and get to the end of the work day. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Coach, good luck tonight uh, yeah. in, in your game against Lano. Well, thanks. Appreciate it. Thank you. Welcome to the Gobbler Sports Network broadcast of Quero Football. The Gobbler Sports Network broadcast of Quero Football is brought to you by Energy Waste of Quero. Energy Waste Rental Equipment for the Eagleford Shale. And now, let's get you out to the stadium for tonight's game. Along with your producers and halftime show hosts Mike Cantu and Michael Cantu Jr., color analyst and statistician Ray Reese, here's the voice of the Quero Gobblers, Clay Poland. Hello, folks. Welcome to Gobbler Stadium for tonight's district matchup between the 4-2 and two Lano Yellow Jackets and the 5-1 and one Quero Gobblers. Ray? Uh, yes, it's sir. a uh, kind of a cool cool night, overcast night. We had rain earlier uh, earlier bef uh, while the team's warming up, but it looks like it's stopped, and uh, that may play a factor in tonight's game. Yeah, uh, one of the good things about field turf, uh, I know when we were when they were putting in the new stadium and putting the turf down, which has been five years ago now, six years ago. Uh, but even I think that this thing can drain, and it'll never rain this hard, but it can drain like 14 inches of water in an hour. So you dump 14 inches of water, but I mean it's just basically sand and, and you know underneath the turf and those big deals. But the the field will be maybe wet on the surface and. But guys are not going to step in a puddle anywhere. Right. It's it's good to uh, be able to play a game, especially an important game like that, like this, in, in in these kind of conditions. Right. No, I think yeah, much in these type of field conditions business. with the rain, with the weather, the right. way it is. Yeah, you wouldn't want to be on grass in a field <laughs> no. that didn't. You know, like if we'd have been in Bandera on that field tonight with all yeah. this rain, it would have been not not conducive to to thank you. It's a good word from our. Side sidebar comments here in the press box, but you know I don't know. We were talking to the uh, Lano radio, one of the Lano radio crew, and you know if you hadn't been following the news, that they had some really serious flooding. Uh, I'm not going to put it on the level of what Coro had in 1998, but uh, you know he said they had lost one life 
uh, and they did not. Travis told us that you know Monday was a holiday here, was a holiday in Lano, but they they did not have school in Lano Tuesday or Wednesday, and hence the freshman and JV games were canceled last night so that their varsity could have another day to practice. But uh, I know it's three and a half hours to Lano, but they don't have 50 people in the stands, and I don't I, I don't think they're going to have brought the. No, I don't see a band or cheerleaders or anything. Right. You're right. You're right. Well, folks. Uh, Lano's decked out in black helmets, white jerseys with orange numbers, and black pants, and your quarrel gobblers are in all green. I take that the back. Their cheerleaders are here, Clay. They're down here with the sign. But usually I was looking where they normally are. They're doing it both on this end. So the gobblers are in their traditional all green, and uh, both teams have uh, come to onto the field. Uh, Quarrel's fixing to run through their sign, and Lano's fixing to run through their sign. Led by uh, Kieran Grant carrying the American flag. So uh, we got about four minutes left before this thing gets kicked off. We'll let you know uh, who who wins the coin toss, who gets the uh, gets the ball first. And while we have some time, we'll go ahead and uh, let Ray tell you who the starters are for tonight's contest yeah. for the Gobblers. A few different ones is we've got some people coming back from injury, but offensively for the Gobblers tonight, uh, at wide receiver Jordan Whittington, at tailback Kieran Grant. Uh, Tight end, uh, no, excuse me, wide receiver Trent Haynes. Tight end, uh, uh, Trey Moore. Uh, Michael Barter will be the quarterback tonight. Kobe Giles will be another tight end uh, on the line for the offense tonight. Brandon Nimick, Caden Jander, Storm Drumgool, Scott Olsofsky, and Charles DeRowan. Defensively for the Gobblers tonight, uh, in the secondary, Jordan Whittington, Seth Burks will be back tonight. Uh, That's going to be a big plus for them. He was doing a real good job yeah. at, at, at linebacker, linebacker position. Yep. Right. Seth will be back in linebacker tonight. Uh, Kieran Grant uh, will be back in the uh, defensive backfield. Uh, Trey Moore will be a defensive end. Uh, Trent Haynes will be a defensive back. Lester Denby will be starting in linebacker. Uh, Kobe Giles at a defensive end. Justin Ficklin. Uh, at a defensive line position, Austin Swartz, uh, defensive back, uh, Storm Drumgull, uh, defensive tackle, and Elijah Vornado will be a defensive tackle. Good deal. Thanks, Ray. All right, uh, we're going to turn it over to uh, the announcer, Mark Iacopinelli, to, uh, to, to get this uh, Star Spangled Banner going. Without you providing all these people and groups, none of this will be possible. 
Lord, I pray tonight you keep a hand over everyone here. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right, folks, we're uh, about set for the coin toss. Captains for the Gobblers are going to be Kieran Grant, Justin Ficklin, Brandon Nimick, and Barton? Michael Barta. Tell you what, their numbers are going to be hard to see, Clay, the little orange numbers. Hopefully the, the numbers on the back are back a little, big, big. little bit bigger. I can't, from across the field, I can't tell who their captains are. Looks like we got number six, Cade Fly. Number seven, Mason Brooks. Number, is that a nine? Can't be a nine. They don't have a number nine. Number eight. They don't have a number eight in here either. Uh, number five's out there. Drew Cooper. Twenty something. Got a small crowd on the on the home side, so if hopefully uh, if you didn't make it to the game, you're listening to us on the uh, broadcast tonight. Yeah, the the weather when we when we were talking this morning at the coaches show and y'all were saying there was no rain in the forecast. This That's afternoon. what my weather bug app said. <laughs> said I know. I, well, I went, but about two about noon, I looked at my phone and it was like saying seventy percent. Oh, I know. That's my bad. Uh, no, it's just. Lano won and will receive. Tonight's uh, re uh, officials are out of the Houston chapter, so uh, we're going to have seven officials. Ray and I used to tell you about that every week. They, Depending on what chapter they go with, uh, it's either six or seven. So tonight we got seven. Mm. Well, no, last week was five. five out of San okay. Antonio, yep, yeah. That's right. That's right. It's either five, five or seven. Five or seven. I don't yep. think we've seen six yet, but I, the hopefully they'll let receivers block downfield this week. <laughs> yeah. If you didn't listen last week, it kind of turned into we got up, and I think they decided they were going to control the score. You know, not let <laughs> not let the score get out of control. But they called a lot of a lot of penalties last week. Folks, if you're listening to us out there on the broadcast, shoot me a text, 361-275-4163. We'll recognize you as uh, as listening. Our first listener tonight, John Kanitka out in Stratton, Texas. John, thank you very much. We appreciate it. I don't think John's missed one since no, you and I have been doing this. I don't this. think he has either. All right, Isaiah Mugia set to kick this thing off. The Yellow Jackets are lined up at about their five-yard line. Deep kick by Munguia, fielded at the end of the end zone, out the back. So this Good thing kick. will come out. Good kick. And that's not. There's not a lot of wind, and I guess it is out of the north, north a little bit. Yeah. It yeah. is going that way. What? Well, look here, Ray. What are they doing out there? Look at them. The, de know, the defense doing something new tonight, folks. Uh, lining up in three-point stances at the at the sideline and sprinting out to their position. That yeah, I that's kind of impressive. All right, here we go, folks. First play of the ball game. Lano lined up at their 25-yard line. Shotgun formation. Quarterback takes the snap, hands off to the running back up the middle. He tries to bounce it, gets taken down. Ball's on the field. Nope, just driven back. Uh, Going to give him about a yard gain. Taken down by Schwartz and Giles and Ficklin. You heard us talk about it in the uh, coaching show, but they have a huge offensive line, especially on that right-hand side. Shotgun formation, single back next to the quarterback. Takes the snap, hands off to the runner back up the middle. He tries to bounce it, gets cut down by Lester Denby, I think. Yep. Ariano's carried twice and gotten two yards. Yep, third and eight, folks. If you're just joining us, 11 minutes left to go in the first quarter. Lano takes the uh, opening drive, third and eight. Quarterback, empty backfield, shotgun formation. Now the running back comes back next to him. Looks like they're changing the play.
five on the play clock. Takes a snap, drops straight back, looks downfield. Uh, he's, he's pressured, got some room, gets the first down, slides nah. at the first down marker. They're going to mark it right at That's the first, first down. down. In the NFL, they're, they're in the NFL, the he wouldn't have made it. They mark, it to him. They'd have marked it at the 34. They give a special shout out to Rebecca and Jim Dawson, right? Oh yeah, they they're listening. So soon. thank you very much, Rebecca and Jim. All right, here we go. First and ten, Lano at the 35 yard line. He got just enough shotgun formation. Quarterback takes a snap, hands off to the running back over the left hand side. He's cut down right at the line of scrimmage by Austin Schwartz. Shout out to the Pinas listening at home, saying "Go Mean Green." Thank you, we appreciate it. Second and ten. Two receivers split to the right, one to the left, in a shotgun formation. Running back offset behind the quarterback. Quarterback takes a snap, hands off to the running back in the backfield. He's met in the backfield by. None other than uh, Seth Burke for a big loss. Nice to have Seth back, like you yep. said. Going to bring up third and 14. Yeah, that Ariano uh, for them one yard, one yard, no yards, minus four yards. So he's carried it four yep. times for two yards total. Lano runs a spread offense. Two receivers split to the right, one to the left. Slot back, offset, offset uh, back in the backfield. And now we have a Lano a call Lano, timeout. Lano timeout. So we'll take one, two, folks, with 9.05 left to go in the first quarter, 0-0. Zero to zero. You're listening to Gobbler Football on KMAXSports.com. For over 124 years, the Poro record has been DeWitt County's most highly read, historically dominant, award-winning, relevant, community-serving, and supporting local sports and news source. Since 1894, the Poro record has been making a difference in the lives and livelihoods of the residents of DeWitt County. Call 361-275-3464 today to become a subscriber or visit DeWittCountyToday.com for more details. All right, folks, back here at Gobbler Stadium, coming out of the timeout called by Lano. It's going to bring up, it's going to be third and 14 for the Yellow Jackets. As they come out onto the field, the defense is already out there trying to pump up this sparse crowd. Two receivers split to either side, shotgun formation. Quarterback calls the play. Takes the snap, fakes the handoff, looks downfield, throws out to the left flat, caught, and driven out of bounds right at the original first down marker. So it's going to bring up fourth and ten. Kieran Grant and Austin Schwartz drove uh, number two, Kendall Downey out of bounds. So four-yard completion. Now that's back to the old John Madden saying, when it's third and 14, you're not going to make a first down many times if you throw it two yards to the receiver. About a two-yard pass, and he ran with it too, but bring up fourth and ten. Deep for the Gobblers is uh, DeAndre Lang and Jordan Whittington lined up at about their 36-yard line. We haven't seen Jordan be able to return anything yet this year. Line drive he kick. He can get this one. Two Whittington takes it at the 30, goes down the left. Now he cuts it, tries to reverse field. Still going inside the Lano territory down to about the 44-yard line. He picked it up at the 31, so 15 and... 15 and 19, 34 yard punt, and he returned it. 19 and six, he returned it 25 yards, so a net of nine yards, a net of nine yards on the punt. First and ten, Quero at the Lano 44 yard line. Gobblers come to the line, two receivers split to the right, one to the left. Bart and a shotgun. Karen Grant lined up next to him. Whittington goes in motion, pitch to Whittington around the right-hand side, got some blocks, flag on the play, going to be held by number 55, Storm Drum Ghoul. I stopped watching the uh, ball carrier race. Yeah, he was when, holding so bad. Storm was uh, yeah. locked it up. Was yeah, it looked like a wrestling move. I'm going to try to get your arm behind my head or something. Uh, don't, don't know how many yards he made. Do you know on the run? Did he yeah, he won because it's in the backfield. It'll be it'll be a ten no, yard penalty. I'm talking about Jordan. Okay, and he made about four. Okay. Well, actually, it's that shovel pass again. Right. It would have been a pass, but 
All right, so this thing's going to be first, first, and, and, 20. first and 20. Well, we're picking up where we left off last week in Bendera. That's for darn sure. If you didn't listen last week, Cora was penalized 15 times for 150 yards. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. Now DeAndre Lang moves over to the left. Two to the left, one to the right. Barta turns, hands off, fakes, throws across the middle, caught by Whittington right at the first down marker. Yeah. Good throw, good catch. He's going to be right on it, and they're going to give it to him. First down, Gobblers at the 34-yard line of Lano. That's one of those, Clay, we talked about it in the uh, – Coaches show one of the, another explosive play, 20 yards or more on one, you know, one offensive snap. Yep. Lang and Haynes split to the left. Trey Moore split to the right. Now he comes back in and goes into a slot formation. Shotgun. Barta turns, hands off to Grant over the left hand side, around the left corner at the 30. Hit hard and driven out of bounds at about the 27, 28 yard line. Bring up second and about three. Shout out to Glenn and Sherry Portis. They said they remember listening, uh, sitting in the rain watching mini gobbler games. That's right. Here we go. Second and three. Gobblers come to the line. Haynes and Whittington to the left. Barta takes a snap, throws a, a slant to Devin Whittington coming from the other side, gets down inside the 15-yard line. Gobbler passing game is clicking tonight, Ray. Yep. First and first and ten, Quero at the 14-yard line following the Barta to Devin Whittington pass. From the 27 all the way down to the 14, a pickup of 13. Gobblers break the huddle with Devin Whittington and uh, Trey Moore to the left. Jordan and Lang to the right. Now Moore comes into a slot shotgun formation. Grant lines up next to him. Throw to uh, Devin out to the left flat, and he catches it and is driven out of bounds inside the 10. You know, I think if you like what they're doing. They're playing so far off in respect of the speed. The little slants and the little five yard just to hitch, so to speak, is going to be open. Shout out to the Gomez family. Saying go mean green. Thank you all very much. We appreciate you listening. It's going to bring up second and four. Ball spotted at the eight. eight yard line. Two receivers to the right. Shotgun formation. Barta turns, hands off to Grant. He tries to bounce it, then goes up the middle. Still going inside the five. Tough run in there by Kieran Grant down to about the three yard line. First and goal from the three for the Quero Gobblers on their opening drive. Shout out to Justin Hilberg listening in, in San Antonio. Justin, thank you. We appreciate it. Barta in a shotgun formation, surrounded by running backs. Hands off to Grant. He goes up the middle. Touchdown, Gobblers. Yep. That was easy. That, that was, was too easy. easy. Too easy. Gobblers in a swinging gate formation. That touchdown brought to you by Brian Gomez, State Farm Insurance. Swinging gate formation. They're going to run it, folks. Whittington is your quarterback. Snaps to Whittington. Throws quick to the left. Oh, oh. picked off and went the other way. Incomplete. They jumped that route. They've been they've been studying that, that swinging that's gate, Ray. That's a good way to defend it with less guys. Just run in between, exactly. run in between the guy. All right, folks, with 6.06 left to go in the first quarter, the, quarter, the score is Quero 6, Lano 0. You're listening to Gobbler Football on KMAXSports.com. Bush's Chicken knows its success comes from loyal customers in the communities they serve. And Bush's Chicken believes in giving back to each community where there is a Bush's restaurant. Most weeks throughout the year, Bush's Chicken is donating meals and or its famous iced tea in support of various schools and churches. During the various sports seasons, there's a good chance you'll find Bush's Chicken in the press box or the concession stands at many high school games. If you were at a game or school event and bought Bush's iced tea or tender rolls, you'll be happy to know that Bush's Chicken donates the profits to the School District Booster Club or community group. Clay, six plays, 44 yards for the score. Took two minutes and 40 seconds. 
no incomplete passes, if I'm correct, except for right. the two-point conversion. Yeah, and that's not statistically doesn't count, yeah. All right, Munguia kicks this thing deep. Fielded at the uh, – nope, goes over his head again, just like the first one, through the back. They'll start at the 25. Shout out to Jordan Werner listening in Artesia, New Mexico. Jordan, we appreciate it. Thank you. Shout out to uh, George and uh, Georgia and hold on a second from Bain, from Bainbridge, Georgia. Joe and Brenda Simmons. I'm sorry about that. Thank y'all for listening. They're still without electricity, Ray. Remember last week yeah, they called in. That's right. All right, here we go. Shotgun formation. Quarterback turns, takes a snap, hands off to the running back. He's cut down quickly by Lester Denby. Gain of about one. Not even one. Yeah, I'm going to give him nothing. <laughs> it's He didn't make, he made less than a half a yard. How's that? There you go. The back of the ball is almost touching the 20. All right, two receivers split to either side for the for the Yellow Jackets. Quarterback in a shotgun formation. Takes the snap, drops straight back, looks, throws out in the left flat. Caught by the big number 44. Ooh. He's hit and goes down. Uh, Going to get back. Ball's to the, out. Ball's we got the ball. Ground, yep. I think we got it. Yep. Yep, Gobblers capitalize on the turnover. Who was the, let's see, the kid who caught it Number was 44. 44. Brooks Keel hit by, I'm not sure, but he, they laid the wood on him. Yeah. Jarred, jarred the ball they, they knocked him straight back like yeah. two yards. He didn't go to the ground, but the ball came out. Gobblers take over at the Lano 30-yard line. So their second drive is also great field position. They come to the line. Now we officials are calling timeout. And they're going to talk this over. Something about the spot, I think, isn't it? I don't know. I'll, I, I, it would be hard for them to change who they're going to give it to at this point. All right. I'll tell you what, the head ref can hardly walk. Bless his heart. I mean, I don't mean that, but he's really limping. Play stands. Ball's at the 30. Two receivers to the left. One to the right. Shotgun formation. Now they shift out, and it's an empty backfield. Bardo is your quarterback. Takes a snap, quick throw out to the left flat, caught by by Lang, making people miss, getting positive yardage. Going to get about three yards on that. They jumped that route, and uh, there was a lot of people over there, Ray. They're going to go deep here in a minute, and somebody's going to be wide open if they keep deep doing that defensively. Going to bring up second and seven. Shot, uh, Wildcat formation. Karen Grant is your quarterback. Lang is in motion. Fake to Lang. Grant keeps oh, it wow. wide open over the around the left hand side. Big block. Gonna go in for a touchdown. Oh, that was well blocked, oh, boy. Big time. Faked to Lang coming underneath and uh, kept it himself. And uh, he wasn't touched till about the four yard line with help from Trey Moore. Touchdown Gobblers. That touchdown brought to you by Brian Gomez State Farm Insurance. Gobblers are in, a, in the uh, swinging gate. Now they're going to come out with uh, Munguia to kick it. Well, that was 30 yards covered in two plays and took off of 44 seconds. Trey, Mc, Trey McNary is your holder, I think. A good job. Good, good. Uh, By everybody, good snap, good hole, good kick. McNary's not on our roster, Ray, but. Uh, yeah, they see him every week, and I, yeah. Well, he's not on this. Oh, he's on this one. I got him right here on this one, yeah. He's not on this, this, this new one. one yet. So, all right, extra point is good. Extra point is good, so uh, that brings the score to 13 to nothing with 4.38 left to go in the uh, first quarter. As Spencer leads the cheers. Yeah, no, like you said, they, they sealed at the corner, and he had two guys running in front of him trying to block one defender, and that was too easy.
All right, so Munguia set to kick this thing off. Another good kick oh, in the, the back end zone. Again. You know, Clay, we didn't. I was going to say something to Travis about this in the coaching show, but if you remember back to the Bay City game, the first game of the year, we gave up that kickoff return for a touchdown like this, right at the start of the second half. Yeah. And you take that, that kickoff out, even on ones they've returned, uh, teams aren't even averaging 10 yards. I know we pooch kick a lot, but they're not even averaging 10 yards of kickoff return, and that doesn't count like this where you've right. had three in a row that are out of the end zone. Three to the left, one to the right, quarterback in the shotguns. Hands off to the running back. He's met in the backfield by none other than Austin Schwartz. Going to be a loss of one. We're sending guys from everywhere. Wow. Austin's a defensive backer. Maybe yeah. you can call him a linebacker, and he tackled the guy in the backfield. They are uh, – the Gobbers are definitely controlling that line of scrimmage The defensive, on the defensive side, offensive as well. Shout out to Lou Pena from Dumas, Texas, class of 1972. Thank you, Lou. Appreciate it. Shotgun formation, three receivers to the right, one to the left. Quarterback fakes the handoff, looks downfield, throws. Got a man wide open. Pick. Picked off by Jordan Whittington on a tip. He's still going. He's at the 30 down the Gobbler sideline. Got some blockers. Going to go in, folks. Touchdown, Jordan Whittington on an interception return. Woo! How you like that, Ray? I know it. The ball was a little high, went through the receiver's hands. Jordan Whittington was there at about the 40, Ray, I'm not sure, yeah. and took it down the gobbler sideline with plenty of blockers. Hey, Mike, where did you get him? 43, thank you. Gobbler's, go, gobbler, 43, I heard 43 you. 43-yard interception up. return by. Thank uh, you there, Mike Foreman. We appreciate it. We'll give you some props. Gobbler's uh, come out with the conventional extra point kick. Mungia and McNary. <laughs> good snap, good hold, and another one through the uprights. So, folks, with 350 left to go in the first quarter, score is Quoro 20, Lano 0. You're listening to Gobbler Football on KMAXSports.com. City Mortgage is a proud supporter of the Quero Gobblers. Branch manager Randy Smith is a longtime supporter of the Quero Gobblers. Loan officer Zach Smith is a former Quero Gobbler. Call them and they will make your home loan worry and stress free. Give them a call at 361 576 9890 or visit them at citymortgagegroup.net. City Mortgage is a gold sponsor of the Quero Gobblers All Sports Booster Club. All right, folks, back here at Gobbler Stadium following the interception return by Jordan Whittington for a touchdown. Score is 20 to nothing in favor of the Gobblers. The quick strike Gobblers, I may add, all right? Yeah, they're, they're not making my job any easier, but I'll take it. Because <laughs> when somebody scores, you got to write more information than anything. And when they happen about 40 seconds apart on the game clock. <laughs> You're still catching up I'm from the still first getting, touchdown. Uh, here we go, I'm up. All right, Munguia kicks it off. Another good kick uh, through the Man, back he of the end zone. He kicked that one like 65 in the air. Yeah. Mungi is booting that thing tonight. So, Lano will take over at the 25. I tell you what, if you're in Lano, it's not a nice place to find yourself after a three-and-a-half-hour bus ride, you know, no. And then you get the wind taken out of your sails to totally in, you know, eight minutes and ten seconds a game clock. It's already 20 to nothing. Three receivers to the left, one to the right. Quarterback in a shotgun. Takes a snap, fakes the handoff, keeps it himself, sh makes some moves and gets nice little run there, about six, seven yards. That's their best running play by far. Well, no, I take that. Well, he scrambled and made a first down on that eight-yard run in the first drive, but – going to bring up second and three for the Yellow Jackets. They are a no-huddle offense. They look to the sidelines for the play. Three receivers to the right, one to the left. Quarterback shotgun, one of the receivers from the right goes in motion in the slot. 
Takes a snap, high snap, hands off to the running back. I mean, there's like, there's side, like five guys in green in the just backfield. Is buried. Yeah. Loss on the play. Going to bring up second and five. Third and five. Excuse me. So third and six. Three receivers to the right, one to the left. Now it's even two and two. Quarterback in a shotgun. Looks to the sideline. Quarter, coach changes the play. Takes the snap. Drops straight back. Looks. Throws across the middle. Oh, incomplete. Led his receiver too far. Going to bring up fourth and five. Good coverage, though, by, there by the Gobblers. Had two or three uh, DBs around that receiver. I don't know why I keep I'm too used to writing 12 for the quarterback. I've made their quarterback number 12 all night, and he's number six. <laughs> What's their punter's number? Can anybody tell? D for the Gobblers is Lang and Whittington. No, it's not. High punt fielded by Whittington at about 36. Takes it uh, over down the left-hand side and is brought down at about the 47. 18. Gobbers will take over at the 48-yard uh, line. A 34-yard punt with a... From the 37 out to the 48, an 11-yard return. Having Jordan back there catching them in the air and running with them sure cuts down on the net punting yardage. Two receivers split to the right, one to the left. Bart and a shotgun. Turns, hands off, fakes, reverse to Whittington around the left-hand side. Got some blockers down the, down the Yellow Jacket sideline. At gone. the 30, at the 20, uh, falls down at about the 10. Good one, job guy. Guy. And one guy dove at him from the side. Nice uh, fake to Karen Grant, reverse to Whittington around the left-hand side. So uh, big gain, first and 10. Going to be first and goal from the 10. So they, that was 40, 42 yards on that rush by Jordan. First and 10 from the 10. You can't go any further at first and goal than what we have. Shotgun formation, Chance Albright lined up behind Barta. Two receivers put to the right. Now Trey Moore comes into the backfield, turns, hands off to Albright, up the middle. Big hole. He's bowling over people. Touchdown, Gobblers. Wow. Wow. You know, we say it all the time, Ray, but you and I could have. We, should, we, we, we probably could have scored yeah. on that. He didn't get hit to the three-yard line, and then it was a defensive back who probably weighs 40 pounds less than him, and he didn't. Even get him to the ground. That touchdown brought to you by Brian Gomez, State Farm Insurance. Isaiah Munguia set to kick the extra point. Good snap, good hold, and flags on the play. False start on the offense. So we'll, we'll re-kick this thing five yards back. Yep, a penalty that doesn't go in the penalty stats. <laughs> <laughs> He's got five yards with his leg makes no difference whatsoever. It may make the accuracy slightly harder, but. Another good snap, good hold, and uh, the kick is through. So with a minute 21 left to go in the first quarter, that brings a score to Quero 27, Lano 0. You're listening to Gobbler Football on KMAXSports.com. Titan Electric specializes in construction and electrical work, residential, commercial, and industrial construction. New homes, remodels, add-ons, and more. They can build homes from the ground up. Titan Electric. Call 512-720-1189 or find them on Facebook as Titan Electric of Quero, Texas. Titan Electric, proud sponsor of Quero Gobbler Athletics. Go Mean Green! 
All right, folks, back here at uh, Gobbler Stadium, 27 to nothing in favor of the Gobblers, following the Chance Albright touchdown, 10-yard touchdown. Mm-hmm. Two plays, 52 yards, and is it 121? Yep. I'm not sure. Another booming kick by Mungia, and the Yellow Jacket lets it go. Yellow Jackets will start at their 25-yard line, down 27 to nothing. Something strange with the clock, Clay. That was a two-play drive. We ran it twice, but we ended up chewing up from 311 to 121. So we chewed up a minute 50 on two plays. They must have let that thing run Some, and, and not something, noticed Something it. happened, yeah, because that's too much time. Two receivers to the right, one to the left, quarterback in a shotgun. Takes a snap, turns and hands off to the running back. He's met in the backfield, gets back to the original line of scrimmage, scrimmage going to get a yard. Brought down by number 26, Jackson Hardwick. Folks, we'll, we'll, we'll keep mentioning it through this broadcast, but reminder, next week the Gobblers play on Thursday night. Yes. So uh, tune in on Thursday night next week, not Friday. Forty-seven seconds left to go in the in the quarter. Two receivers to the right, one to the left, quarterback in a shotgun. Takes a snap, hands off to the running back. He tries to bounce it, nothing doing. Met five yards deep. They are just. Yeah, I mean, it's just like five guys in the backfield as wow. soon as the ball snapped. Second and about 13. I'm sorry, third and about 13. And Lano's probably going to let this. Yeah, he lost, clock he run lost out. four yards on that. Yeah, they're going to let this thing run out. So. Folks, at the end of the first quarter, the score, Quero 27, Lano 0. Ray, you got something? Yeah, let me tell read you, uh, as you probably know by now, but we hope you'll buy a ticket and come. But the Quero ISD Education Foundation is proud to announce their 2018 concert for classrooms featuring native Texan Michael Martin Murphy performing his Cowboy Christmas concert here in Quero at the Performing Arts Center on Saturday, November the 10th at 7 p.m. And... Mr. Murphy is known as one of the best songwriters in America. He's crafted and recorded uh, iconic hits that have topped the pop country, bluegrass, and western music charts. Uh, he's earned six gold albums, multiple Grammy nominations, and his songs have been performed by a litany of people you would know. Lyle Lovett, John Denver, Kenny Rogers, Cher, Manfred Mann, The Monkees, and more. And also the, uh, the Quarrel High School Choir is going to perform a number or two with him at this concert. Uh, the tickets for the concert are now on sale at the CISD administration building and via the foundation's website at www.coroedfoundation.org and seating is reserved and all the proceeds benefit the Coral ISD teachers and staff through grants that are awarded by the Coral ISD Education Foundation. So, Thank you, Ray. That is the night of November, Saturday, November the 10th and hopefully our playoff game will be on a Friday night. <laughs> Coral Ed- 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 Education good Foundation, time. that's a good, good uh, Good foundation there. Everything goes to the students and teachers. Shotgun formation, three to the left, one to the right. Hands off to the run back. Up the middle, big hole. Tries to bounce it. Gets out to about the 34 He didn't get a first line. down. No, he didn't. Looked like as big a hole as it was. He got 14. I mean, he got 12. D. Lang and uh, Haynes came over to, to cut him down short. So it's going to bring up fourth and about one. As the Lano punting team comes on. I thought down. I know you'd be down more, but 27 to nothing at the start of the second quarter. I'm not sure what you had to lose for going for, going for it. For it. Yeah. You had to try to gain a little momentum. But Lang and Whittington lined up at about their 30-yard line. Good snap. Pretty good punt. Fielded by Lang at about the 20 
uh, 30, 31, reverses field, comes onto the gobber side, and is hit hard and brought down at about the 46-yard line. Nice return there by uh, DeAndre Lang. DeAndre Lang with, the punt return with, about, with exactly 11 minutes left to go in the half. Quarter leading 27 to nothing. Once it, you know, the jobs by the special teams have been good tonight. Once again, 35-yard punt by Lano, which is, you know, not shabby for high school, but you end up with 15 yards on the return. Shout out to the employees from Full of Pep Feed Store and Ranch Center. Thank you very much. We appreciate y'all listening. Shotgun formation, two to the right. Uh, Moore comes in in a slot. Bart is your quarterback. Takes a snap. Hands off to Grant. He re- bounces it out to the right-hand side immediately. Out to the 50, down to the 40, driven out of bounds. Thought it was a late hit. Yeah, he was clearly out on the white, but I think the guy was stumbling and kind of fell into him. Big run there by Kieran Grant on first down to get into Yellow Jacket territory. Ball's going to be spotted at the 38-yard line. Picked up 16 in the first down. Just a delayed uh wasn't it wasn't a draw, was it? No. Shot, shotgun formation. Whittington is your quarterback. Jordan keeps it himself. Follows his blockers around the right hand side. Cuts up the middle. Brought down close to the markers. Ten yard run. Eleven yard run. First down. Quarrel. Ray, they're the offense is gashing them. Yeah, no, they're. You know, Travis talked in the coaches show about uh, their defensive line, but our offensive line has definitely held uh, held up there into the bargain so far tonight. Trey Moore limps off the field. Gobblers come to the line. Three receivers to the left, one to the right. Grant lined up behind Barta. Barta takes snap, quick throw across the middle. Caught by D-Lang. Rolls out. Picked up by Haynes down at the 10-yard line. So nice heads-up play there by Trent Haynes to pick that fumble up. And uh, advan- not advance it, but that's where he recovered it at the 10-yard line. So they're going to put him back. Yeah, we got a flag on the play. Well, that'll that'll make it easier than trying to score this because <laughs> so much holding on the gobblers. All right, okay, so, so not, nothing doing on that. No, no doing. pass, no reception, just a 10-yard penalty. Balls back out to the 37-yard line, first and 20. Gobblers come to the line. Devin Whittington and uh, out to the right along with Kieran Grant. Jordan Whittington is the quarterback. Grant comes in motion. Fake to Grant. Jordan keeps it up the middle. Spins. Gets still going. Making people miss down at the 20. Down at the 10. Oh, big block. Knocked two players out. Uh, touchdown, Gobblers. I'm sorry. I yeah, we, we, were all, we were all in there. I didn't the call the play. I'm sorry. Touchdown, Gobblers. Nice run there by Jordan Winnington. He made about eight people miss, folks. Did a 360 at one point. Yeah, he did. That touchdown brought to you by Brian Gomez State Farm Insurance. I wish we had the, the number to the player that laid the block out uh, on the two. I think, Lano, Lano I think it was Key Man, wasn't it? I'm not wasn't sure. he downfield and he peeled back? I don't I'm know. Not Maybe sure. not. Looked like number six. Isaiah Munguia is set to kick this thing through the uprights. Six, Keyland got yeah. the block. And Mike yeah. Foreman said it was Kieran Grant. So nice block, knocked out two uh, Lano Yellow Jackets off the play, and that uh, helped Whittington get into the end zone for the how many yards? 37-yard uh, run. For the 37-yard touchdown run. The yeah. extra point by Munguia was good, so that brings the score to 34 to nothing with 9.43 left to go. In the half. Folks, and I don't, you know, not trying to sugarcoat this, but Navarro, one of the ranked teams, you know, in the top 20 in 4A, they played, only beat Lano 14 to 10 last week. I mean, and it's 34 to nothing a minute, two minutes into the second quarter. Well, Ray, you know, we've said all along, if we're healthy, if we got everybody out there and we're healthy, I mean, we're going to be tough to beat. So... The the uh, yeah, that was four, Clay. That was four plays covered 54 yards and took a minute and 17 seconds. 
another another quick strike uh, score. Munguia is set to kick this thing into the wind this time. This will be interesting to see what he does. <laughs> I'd let him kick it deep again. Yep. He does. Wind catches it. Lano uh, fields it about the 13-yard line, takes it up the middle, uh, gets out to about the 26. Still good coverage. Still good coverage. Brought down by number 26, Jackson Hardwick. So Lano will take over at the 27-yard line. Maybe closer to the 28, first and 10. Shotgun formation for the Yellow Jackets. Two to the right, one to the left. Quarterback takes a snap, looks to throw. Throws out in the left flat, caught. Makes a couple people miss, gets out to about the 31-yard line. Nice coverage there by Trent Haynes. You know, it looks like you think, oh, wow, they completed the pass, and the guy was kind of open, and they netted all of three yards. Yeah, we're pursuing really fast tonight. Here we go, second and seven for the Yellow Jackets. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. Quarterback lines up in a shotgun. Takes the snap, rolls to his right, looks downfield. Got a man out of his hands. Ooh. And the safety, Whittington, got there in a hurry. Yep. Didn't give him a chance to the ball, catch it on the rebound. The, yeah, the ball tipped up out of his hands, and Whittington finished him off to where uh, he had no chance of catching that thing. Brings up third and seven. Shout out to Russell Williams, class of 1981. Gobbler Letterman from 78, 79, and 80. Living in Houston, Texas. Thank you, Russell. We appreciate you listening. Quarterback takes a snap. Looks. He's pressured. Ah, gets out of there. the pocket. Is going to run out of bounds on his own. Short of the first, first down, down marker. Good defense. Had a chance to sack him. Going to bring up fourth and short. Fourth, well, third, fourth and five. So the punting team comes on. He got the ball out to the 33-yard line. So it's just a pickup of two on the scramble. Lang and Whittington lined up at about their 37-yard line. Good, oh, good, punt, good, there. good punt there. Turns yeah. it over and... Uh, See where they mark this thing. Going to mark yeah. it at about the. Th oh, he's he's going to come back. He's just running to a spot. Yeah. He's going to come back. You got to keep coming. All right. 29-yard line. 29-yard line. Nice punt, though, by 17. That's Caleb Dotson. 48-yard punt with no return. First and ten, Quarrow. 836 left to go in the first half. Up 34 to nothing. Barta in a shotgun surrounded by. This is the first time we haven't had the ball out in either in their territory or right at midfield. Surrounded by Grant and Cardenas. Now Cardenas comes into a slot. Oh, then we jumped. We jumped. Yep. Number 80. Thomas Metter. Metter and Cardenas uh, shifted over to the left-hand side, and they both kind of got a little antsy. First and 15 for the Gobblers. Well, we're staying in the huddle a long time. Sure are. 
They break the huddle quickly. Two receivers to the left. We got a tight end inside. We're unbalanced. Bart, Bart in a shotgun. Hands off to Grant. Oh, he he slips and falls. He had it. We had it blocked too. Gonna lose about three. Gonna yeah. lose two actually. Yeah, minus two. So second and second and eight, seventeen. Seventeen. Yep. That's the first negative play we've had all night, and it would not have been negative if he hadn't have slipped. All right, so Gobblers come to the line. Shotgun formation, two receivers split to the left, one to the right. Barta drops straight back, looks and throws right. Oh, pick, pick off. off. In, the in the right flat, inside the 10, brought down inside the 5. His intended receiver was Jordan Whittington. Jordan had his back to him. And uh, number 18, the punter, who also plays defense, Caleb Dotson, intercepted it and ran it down inside the five-yard line. So big turnover there by the Gobblers. Yeah, he returned it from about the... Yeah. To the three-yard line. Yellow Jackets come to the line with single receiver split to either side. Shotgun formation. Slot back. Turns hands off to the big fullback. Met and driven back. He's going to lose yardage there. Led by Trey Moore, Justin Ficklin, and Kobe Giles. Yeah, Travis said in the coaches' show, if you were not able to listen to it, that I think in the Navarro game, he said they had the ball three times. Lano did three times inside the 20-yard line and couldn't get any points out of it. First and goal, uh, I'm sorry, second and goal from the five-yard line. Same formation. Quarterback in a shotgun, turns handoff, same play. Over the left-hand side, gets inside the five. Nothing doing after that. So positive yardage, but... Uh, Still seems like a mile away, I'm sure, for the Yellow Jackets having to face that defense. Yeah, he only got a yard. Gobbler defense trying to pitch his shutout in the first half. We'll give, we'll give him two on that one. So ball's back at the three, so it's third and three. Single receiver split to either side, shotgun. Receiver goes in motion. Quarterback fakes to him, keeps it himself over the left-hand side. Tries nothing to bounce it, nothing. He lost, Le he lost, Denby, he lost two yards. Lester Denby came up and made a great tackle to knock him back a yard. So that's going to bring up fourth and goal from the five. Yeah, he's going to get points. All right, so the Yellow Jackets have a left-handed kicker that they're going to trot out here to try to get points on the board. You better hurry. Got five on the play clock, and he's taking his time. Got it off. High snap. Ooh. Low kick. He made and it's it. Good. it's good. Shout out to uh, Ted Brazil, Derek Ross, Boo Green, and Shaq. They're listening out there in Quo tonight. Thank you all very much. We appreciate it. All right, folks, with 540 left to go in the half, that brings the score to Quo 34, Lano 3. You're listening to Gobbler Football on KMAXSports.com. Energy Waste has provided surface rental equipment to the oil field and construction industry since 1986. Energy Waste is proud to have been recognized as a three-time winner in community and social investment by South Texas Energy Economic Roundtable. Energy Waste is a proud supporter of all Quero ISD athletic programs and all of the supporting organizations and would like to remind you, once a gobbler, always a gobbler. All right, folks, back here at Gobbler Stadium. 21. Number 18. Uh, Caleb Dodson. I'm sorry, we're answering a question about who had the interception. <laughs> okay, so the field goal was good by Diego Miguel. Deep for the Gobblers is going to be Marcus Gomez and Jordan Whittington. 
Fielded by Gomez at the 10. Reverses it to Whittington. He goes down the gobber sidelines and uh, is still on his feet. Down to about the 36-yard line. Nice uh, return there by Whittington following the, the, re the reverse. Yeah. 20, 25 yards on the return for the Gobblers. And five of it, he was uh, he was head up with a Lano oh, yellow yeah, jacket. Just pushing him backwards <laughs> for five yards. All right, Gobblers come to the line. First and 10 from their 35-yard line, up 34 to 3. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. Barta in a shotgun with Grant lined up behind him. Barta takes a snap, turns, hands off to Grant around the left-hand side. Got some room at the 40. Hurdles a player out, out close to the 50-yard line. Great run there by Karen Grant. Wow. Wow. Yeah, he just went airborne and went over the defen defensive back. From the 35 out to the 49. Pick up a 14. I don't think they heard me, so I'm going to give them another shout-out to Ted Brazil, Derek Ross, Boo Green, and Shaq. They're listening out there in Quero. Thank you all very much. We appreciate it. Three receivers split to the right, one to the left. Barta and Green, uh, Grant in the backfield. Fakes to Grant, throws down the middle, uh, lobbed it. Man, he, uh, that wasn't a, a Barta throw there. No, I think... Barta saying something to the sidelines. Yeah, I think either Barta thought he was going to run something else oh, or Jordan yeah. ran something else. Jordan was like cutting inside, yeah, cutting that, underneath the defense. That's why he hesitated to throw. Yeah, throw it. I think it looks weird. Yeah, I agree with you. Barta was telling the sidelines that uh, that very thing, I think, Ray, that he ran the wrong route. So brings up second and ten. Ball spotted at the 49-yard line. Gobbers come to the line. Devin Whittington, De DeAndre Lang to the right. Chance Albright lined up behind Barta. Barta takes a snap. Hands off to Albright up the middle. Bounces it. Big hole. He's stiff arming, folks. Still going down the Gobbler sidelines. Cuts into the middle of the field. Gets down inside the 20-yard line. Chance Albright on a tough run just yeah. pushing people down. Down, right. Wow. Yeah, from the 49 all the way to the 18. I'd like to give a shout out to my family. They're driving home from Navarro tonight following the volleyball game. Leona, Claire, and Carly. Thank you all very much. And a shout out to Debbie Lynch. She's the, the, the brains behind that operation over there, Ray. Yes, for sure. Barta turns hands off to uh, Albright up the middle. Cuts up the middle. He started out on the right side of the line. Cut up the middle and got down to the one-yard line. Oh, my gosh, Ray, you're not going to believe this. What? Bandera, 14, Wimberley, 7. Wow. <laughs> and uh, Navarro, 47, Eastside Memorial, zero. 0. Eastside has not scored a point all year. Remember, that game that is next Thursday, folks. Shotgun formation. Barta lines up, uh, got everybody around him. Hands off to all, but up the middle. He's hit hard, nothing doing. The Yellow Jackets played that one good. Maybe going to be a loss of one. I don't know, but uh, my gosh, people are not hearing our shout outs, Ray. Shout out to Leona, Claire, and Carly Pullen listening in the car on the way home from the Navarro volleyball game. Thank you all very much. We appreciate it. Now leave me alone. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. All right, here we go. Same formation. Barda and a shotgun. Turns hands off to Albright over the left-hand side. He gets down back to the one-yard line. They grabbed his ankles and uh, couldn't get any more. The ball, yeah, ball is out at three. He picked up two to get back to the one. Going to bring up third and one, uh, third and two. We're probably going to go for this if they don't make it. You think, Ray? Yeah, I don't think he'd kick a field goal here. Oh, they got the ball with the two. Two receivers split to the right, one to the left. Now Moore comes into uh, 
the backfield. Barta is your quarterback. Albright takes the ball up the middle, and he bowls into the end zone. Tough run in there by Chance Albright to uh, put the Gobblers on the scoreboard again. That touchdown brought to you by Brian Gomez, State Farm Insurance. Isaiah Munguia set to kick the extra point. Good kick by Munguia. And, folks, we need to mention, you know, we always talk about uh, the, the good snap and the good hold and the good kick. Well, the kicker, I'm sorry, the uh, the snapper is uh, Jaden Nichols. So Jaden's doing a good job of getting that ball back there on every extra point. So good job, Jaden. 2.52 left to go in the half. Quarter up 41-3. to three. Got some new uh, new faces out there on the uh, kickoff team, Ray. A couple yeah, of I would think we're going to see a lot of new faces the rest of the night. A couple of kids they brought up from the JV. We're going to put them on this kickoff coverage team. Lano Yellow Jackets are lined up at about their five-yard line. High kick by Mungia. And the Yellow Jacket lets it go out of bounds, which draws a flag. He had the wind working against him there, and it yeah. just uh, kept pushing that ball to the right. I'm sorry, to the left. Shout out to Marianne Koenig listening to us out there. Thank you very much, Marianne. We appreciate it. Well, they're going to, I would think, elect to take the ball with the. That's their best starting field position. Well, other than after the interception, but I mean in a regular type situation, they'll be their best starting field position. And they. <laughs> I guess this is upon up, upon requ request, huh, Ray? They put yeah, this put thing on the on the far hash. Far hash. Two receivers split to the right, one to the left. Quarterback in a shotgun takes a snap, looks to his left, got a man uh, wide open downfield, overthrows him. Wow, busted coverage there. Uh, Let's see, man, Jackson Hardwick in pursuit there, but I don't know if that was. Not sure what happened there, but they had a guy wide open. Yeah, it was a linebacker trying to cover him. I don't know if he kind of came out of the backfield on a wheel route. He did. He rolled out. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. Quarterback in a shotgun. Takes a snap. Hands off to the running back. He's met in the backfield. Nothing doing. Kobe Giles along with uh, Jackson Hardwick. Yeah, he lost a yard. Third and 11, a long 11. Three receivers split to the right, one to the left. Quarterback takes the snap, fakes, looks. He's pressured and goes down in the backfield. Trey Moore got to him along with uh, Drumgool and Joe Cardenas. So yeah. nice defensive play there. He lost four. Where are they going? Let's see. Yeah, no, he really lost five. Going to bring up fourth and 15, 16 maybe. Yeah. I think well, they may call a timeout. Yeah, they're going to let it know. The clock stopped. Yeah, the referees are talking about something. Mm -hmm. 
Linda and Charlie Hoff listening on Cattle Guard Road. Thank you all very much. We appreciate we appreciate it. Mike and Donna Keeker listening uh, to us from Tomball. Thank you very much, uh, Mike and Donna. We appreciate it. All right. All right, so they they changed the game clock to 1 minute 43 seconds, and it's going to be fourth down. Punting team comes on. Lang and uh, Whittington lined up at about their 40. If Lano was smart, they'd stand here and let 25 seconds run off, which looks like what they're going to do. And I guess when you're up 41 to three, you don't call timeout to try to get the ball to try to get the ball back. Got it off. No, they they said he didn't get it off. Oh, they called timeout. The 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 snap was before the uh, play clock uh, expired, but the Lano coaching staff called the timeout. So. Uh, Minute 12 left to go in the half. Coro's up 40, 41 to 13. Uh, let me back up. They're up 41 to 3. You're listening to Gobbler Football on KMAXSports.com. Titan Electric specializes in construction and electrical work, residential, commercial, and industrial construction. New homes, remodels, add-ons, and more. They can build homes from the ground up. Titan Electric. Call 512-720-1189 or find them on Facebook as Titan Electric of Quero, Texas. Titan Electric, proud sponsor of Quero Gobbler Athletics. Go Mean Green! All right, folks. Minute 12 left to go in the half. Lano in a uh, punt formation. Clay. Lano is not going to get the ball back, I wouldn't assume, in the first half, but a little jump start on the halftime stats. Lano has 12 yards of rushing in the first half and 12 yards of passing. So 24 yards in the first half mm. offensively for Lano. I believe it. Good snap. Oh, almost how blocked. How did we not block you? Man. Oh, we went well, way out of bounds. Good they, thing we didn't rough him, they but didn't I mean. Even, yeah, they didn't even field it. Uh, wow, I thought he was all over that, that punt, Ray. Yeah. He was definitely back there. Let's see. The ball was at the 24, and they're going to mark it at the Quero 47. So 29 yards on the punt that was kind of directed out of bounds by the heavy rush by the Gobblers. Gobblers come to the line. Two receivers split to either side. Grant lined up behind Barta in the backfield. Lang goes in motion. Fake to Lang. Throw to oh, Trey wow. Moore wide open. Down to the 20. Down, Taken down at the 20. Nice uh, play there by Trey Moore. He was lined up over in the left, hand, left side of the field and just ran a drag across the field and uh, caught it over on the Lano sideline. Three, Takes it down to the 20-yard line. 52 seconds and counting. 33-yard pickup on first down. I was going to say, I was going to ask if you thought that we were, would go for the kill, Ray, but I think the, the kill was already a couple of scores ago. Right now. Wildcat formation. Jordan Whittington is your quarterback. And they call timeout. With 27 seconds left to go. We'll take a short break, too. Uh, 27 seconds left to go in the half. Quarrel's up 41-3. to three. You're listening to Gobbler Football on KMAXSports.com. For over 40 years, the Quarrel All Sports Booster Club has been there to support all CISD athletics. The Quarrel All Sports Booster Club raises money throughout the year to assist the athletes in golf, volleyball, tennis, track and field, football, baseball, softball, and cross country. The Booster Club donates over $20,000 each year to support the athletes. Whether it's uniforms, sports equipment, or ice machines, the Quero All Sports Booster Club is there. The Quero All Sports Booster Club meets every Wednesday at Davis Contractors, located on FM 236. Become a member and help us help our kids. 
Yeah, it's one of those things, you know, you you might want to try to work on things, but when you're up 41-3, to three, you have to be careful that what you do doesn't look like you're trying to, you know. Yeah. It would have been nice to work on a two-minute drill again, but, you know, you just really can't do that. All right, here we go. Not in a wildcat. We're in a regular formation. Bart is your quarterback. Shotgun turns and throws to Grant out in the left flat. Blocks oh, are made. Flags oh. on the play. Ah, uh, that block looked good to me. Yeah. By the way, folks, he scored on the play, but that's coming back. We were watching the flags getting thrown. Just threw a uh, little flare pass out to Grant in the left flat, and he took it the distance. Illegal block. Ten-yard penalty. Going to remain first down. So let's see where they they're going to put it at the 18 or the 28. So he gets two yards on the reception and ten yards on the penalty. Twelve to six for two yards and then a ten-yard penalty. So now it's first and 18. This might be a chance to try a long field goal and get Munguia some. True. Well, they're not going to get this off. He's in the under better 10. Hurry. They better hurry. Four. They ain't going to get it off. Travis called timeout. We still got another one. Yeah. We're okay. Yep. Timeout, Quarrow. You know, some folks are probably wondering, you know, well, why are you calling a timeout with 22 seconds left? But, you know, y you got to work on this stuff and you got to right, no, you got to execute it right. It's a teaching moment. Yes. Because when you get into a crunch time game, you're you're going to want to have everything uh, in a row. You know what I mean? Right. No, exactly. And, again, that's why, you know, like I was talking about earlier, it makes it awkward because – you don't want it to appear like you're trying to run the score up because good sportsmanship would say you don't do that. But by the same token, you know, you need to work on, okay, what do we do if we have the ball with 22 seconds and one timeout, you know. And we're down by six. And we're you down know? by six. Or, you know, or you take the position, it's a tie game. Right. Let's try, to, let's try to hit a 10-yard pass, call timeout, and kick the field goal. Right. All right. Both teams are back out on the field. Three receivers to the left. Single receiver Whittington, uh, Jordan yeah. Whittington split to the right. They're definitely double covering Jordan. They got <laughs> yeah, they the guy are. right on him in the safety about 10 yards off. Barta takes a snap, steps up, throws across the middle in the end zone. Caught Stop. by Whittington. Yeah. He high pointed it, folks. Yeah, you just throw, you just throw it up for grabs and let him go get it. He And he did go, go and get it. Just high pointed it and... Uh, Touchdown Gobblers with 14 seconds left to go in the half. That touchdown brought to you by Brian Gomez, State Farm Insurance. Munguia set to kick the extra point. Their radio crew gets excited even when we score, Clay. <laughs> I know the people listening can't hear it, but we can hear them. All right. He lines one through, and it's good. Quick shout out to my buddy Chad Cummings. I think he's listening out there from Worthington, Minnesota. He was here last yeah, week. Enjoyed getting to see him again, Clay. He uh, he's trying to listen uh, incognito, but when you send me a text commenting on something we said, then that means you were listening. So, <laughs> <laughs> am I right? Uh, so, Chad, I'm glad y'all made it home. All right, and glad y'all got to spend some time with us. I wish you could have been here. The weather got a little bit cooler, Chad, right after y'all left. Yeah, not, oh, not much, but yeah, they, but, they, but it rained. I know they, it rained. They were still here. They were oh, still here. Still, oh, okay. They, they left Monday afternoon. Okay. So, well, that was fifty-three yards in three plays. The only good thing this year is when Whittington catches a touchdown pass. No offense to Drew, but it's not from Remen Schneider, and I don't have to write Whittington from <laughs> Remen Schneider. Yeah. Bart is not quite as long. Yeah. All right, so. Mungia set to kick this thing off with 14 seconds left. High kick. Hangs in the air. Hits the ground. The, the, le the yellow jacket uh, jumps around in about the six-yard line, and we cover him up. 
See if you what number is that kid who ran the ball? Like number twenty. Yeah. Yep, number twenty. He's the guy who returned it last time on the kickoff, and I missed his number. Missed his number last time. So with eight seconds left to go, Lano will take over at the. Looks like they're going to spot him at about the eight-yard line. Three receivers split to the left, one to the right. Quarterback in a shotgun. Turns and hands off to the running back up the middle. Big run out to the 20. Brought down at about the 30. So uh, the that's helping their uh, their yardage there, Ray. Yeah. And that's going to be in the end of the first quarter, folks, with uh, Quarrel leading 48-3 to against the Lano Yellow Jackets. You're listening to Gobbler Football on KMAXSports.com. For over 124 years, the Quero record has been DeWitt County's most highly read, historically dominant, award-winning, relevant, community-serving, and supporting local sports and news source. Since 1894, the Quero record has been making a difference in the lives and livelihoods of the residents of DeWitt County. Call 361-275-3464 today to become a subscriber or visit DeWittCountyToday.com for more details. Titan Electric specializes in construction and electrical work, residential, commercial, and industrial construction. New homes, remodels, add-ons, and more. They can build homes from the ground up. Titan Electric. Call 512-720-1189 or find them on Facebook as Titan Electric of Quero, Texas. Titan Electric, proud sponsor of Quero Gobbler Athletics. Go Mean Green! For over 40 years, the Quero All Sports Booster Club has been there to support all CISD athletics. The Quero All Sports Booster Club raises money throughout the year to assist the athletes in golf, volleyball, tennis, track and field, football, baseball, softball, and cross country. The Booster Club donates over $20,000 each year to support the athletes. Whether it's uniforms, sports equipment, or ice machines, the Quero All Sports Booster Club is there. The Quero All Sports Booster Club meets every Wednesday at Davis Contractors, located on FM 236. Become a member and help us help our kids. City Mortgage is a proud supporter of the Quero Gobblers. Branch manager Randy Smith is a longtime supporter of the Quero Gobblers. Loan officer Zach Smith is a former Quero Gobbler. Call them and they will make your home loan worry and stress free. Give them a call at 361-576-9890 or visit them at citymortgagegroup.net. City Mortgage is a gold sponsor of the Quero Gobblers All Sports Booster Club. All right, you're listening to the um, the Quero Gobbler Band.
Ladies and gentlemen, proudly introducing the 2018-2019 award-winning Quarrel High School Trotters Dance Team. Officers are Junior First Lieutenant and All-American Dancer Amanda Garcia. Sophomore and Second Lieutenant and All-American Dancer Kaylee Trevino. Social Officer, Valerie Guerrero. The Trotter is under the direction of Ms. Naomi Tarin. Congratulations to the Trotter of the Week, Kaylee Trevino. This week, the Trotters will be performing To Love Me Do, played by the Fighting Gobbler Band. Please sit back and enjoy the show. taking the field is the award-winning Fighting Gobbler Band. Tonight the band will present their 2018 UIL production, Alone, featuring the music of Radiohead, Metallica, and Gustav Mahler. Featured solos are Joseph Cerna and Brian Rogers. The band will compete at Region 12 UIL marching competition tomorrow at 1 p.m. Please sit back and enjoy the show. As if broken bones hurt more than the names we got called, and we got called them all. So we grew up believing no one would ever fall in love with us. That we'd be lonely forever. 
that we'd never meet someone to make us feel like the sun was something they built for us in their tool shed. So broken heartstrings bled the blues, we tried to empty ourselves so we'd feel nothing, don't tell me that hurts less than a broken bone. If an ingrown life is something surgeons can cut away, that there's no way for it to metastasize, it does. To this day, kids are still being called names. The classics were, hey stupid, hey spaz. Seems like every school has an arsenal of names getting updated every year. And if a kid breaks into school and no one around chooses to hear it, they make a sound. Uh, they're just background noise from a soundtrack stuck on repeat when people say things like, kids can be cruel. We grew up learning to cheer on the underdog because we see ourselves in them. We stem from a root planted in the belief that we are not what we were called. We are graduating members from a class of we made it. Not the faded echoes of voices crying out names will never hurt me. Of course, they did.
right, folks, we're uh, back here at halftime. Uh, the score is Quarrel 48, Lano 3. Um, you know, if you're obviously you're not here, you're listening to it on the on the uh, radio. It has been total domination by the Gobblers, but both uh, both sides of the ball. Ray, what numbers do you have to show the total domination? Let's see. There we go. I couldn't hear myself. Now I can hear myself. Thanks, Mike. Uh, yeah, the, the stats are as lopsided as the scoreboard is. Uh, but uh, first downs for Quero, 14. Uh, Lano, 2. And the second one for Lano came on the last play of the first half. Uh, Quero, 16 rushes for 221 yards. Uh, that's a little bit over... 14 yards a carry. Um, Quarrel had 105 yards passing, so Quarrel had 326 yards of total offense in the first half. Lano, 19 carries for 35 yards. And then again, uh, not to belabor that point, but of that 35 yards, 23 came on the last carry of the first half. So up until that point, uh, they were 18 carries for 12 yards. And then passing... Lano is uh, 12 yards, uh, 12 yards of passing. So uh, total yardage for Lano 47. Total yardage for Quero 326. Barta was six of nine with the one interception on the slip screen that resulted in the Lano field goal. They had the ball first and goal from the three and ended up kicking the field goal from the five yard line. So a 22 yard field goal. Um, Lano was 3 of 7 with the one interception. Their interception was returned uh, 43 yards for a touchdown by uh, by Jordan Whittington. Quarrel fumbled once but recovered it, so lost none. Lano fumbled once, recovered by Quarrel. Quarrel had five penalties for 40 yards. Lano was not penalized in the return game. Um, let's see, uh, that's 94, 114. Quarrel had 119 return yards on you know, punts, kickoffs, and interceptions. So 119 return yards to Lano's 17. Uh, the interesting thing, Clay, I mentioned before we came back on the air, we have 48 points, and we were one of one on third down conversions. We only had to go to third down one time. Really? To score 48, to score 48 points. Lano, uh, on the flip side of that, was one of seven on third down. So for the opening kickoff, they made a first down on third and eight, the quarterback scrambled for eight yards, and that was their only third down conversion of the first half. Oddly enough, the time of possession is actually in Lano's favor, 12 minutes and 44 seconds to Quero's 11-16, but most of that has been a result of field position and how far Quero has had to go. For instance, uh, first drive, we only had to go 44 yards. Second drive, we only had to go 30 yards. Third score was a 43-yard interception return. Third touchdown drive by the offense, only had to go 52 yards. Next touchdown drive, only had to go uh, 54 yards. Uh, and uh, the last two uh, in the second quarter, I guess the longest touchdown drive covered 65 yards for Quarrel, and the last one was 53. But a uh, number of plays there, you know, 6, 2, 2, 4, 4, 7, and 3. So when you look at it from the standpoint of uh, – Quell had 25 offensive snaps that netted 326 yards, and Lano had the ball 29 snaps. They added actually more snaps, but their 29 snaps only resulted in in 47 yards. Individually, uh, for the Gobblers, uh, obviously Whittington and Keyran Grant lead the way, but Keyran, oh, I can't say that. Chance Albright had just as good a first had a first half rushing the ball, but uh, Keyran had uh, seven carries for 70 yards and two touchdowns, averaging 10 yards a clip. Uh, Clay Chance Albright, three carries for 90 yards. Uh, no, I'm sorry. That's not that on that chance. Uh, my apologies. Jordan Whittington, three carries for 90 yards and a touchdown. Chance was six carries for 61 yards. So Grant averaged 10 yards a carry. Albright averaged 10 yards a carry. And Whittington averaged 30 yards a carry. Yeah. Uh, receiving Whittington two receptions for 48 yards and a touchdown. Devin Whittington, that was Jordan Whittington, two for 48 and a touchdown. Devin Whittington, uh, two for 19. 
DeAndre Lang one for three. Uh, Trey Moore had a nice reception on that, dragging the tight end across the middle late, uh, one for 33. And Key Ran had a two-yard reception that was 20-something that got called back for a penalty. But uh, in any event, uh, again, you know, 226, uh, 326 yards of offense in uh, 25 offensive offensive snaps for the Gobblers. So uh, Quail's offense is averaging 13 yards a snap tonight. In any event, let's go a little bit through what happened in the non-varsity results last night. In case you are just joining us, 48-3 to at the half. Lano and Quail did not play a freshman and JV game yesterday. Lano's had some very serious flooding in their uh, neck of the woods the last three or four days and uh, was not able to have school Monday through Wednesday so that we did not play high school sub-varsity. But yesterday, uh, Howell, which is a junior high in Victoria, came to Gobbler Stadium and Quail's seventh white won 16-8. to The seventh green won 42-6. to uh, the eighth grade white team won. I did not get a score from anybody on that, but I was told that they won. And the eighth green uh, came up short, uh, losing 20 to six. Uh, as we've said repeatedly tonight, if you haven't been listening and you're just joining us now, next week the varsity will play on Thursday, October the 25th in Austin. It is a Thursday night game, Austin Eastside Memorial. The junior high teams are open next week. They do not play, and uh, so it, so is the freshman and JV. Right, you, you, Travis indicated that Austin Eastside Memorial did not have a freshman or a JV team. They only have they only have a varsity a varsity team. So next week, if you want to get your fix of Gobbler football, you're going to have to drive to Austin on Thursday night or listen to us on Thursday night. Uh, that kickoff will be uh, at 7:30. Uh, Clay, you got the the volleyball. And the girls played at Navarro tonight, which I know is a tough place to play. But uh, yeah, they um, lost in three. Lost three close ones. Uh, lost 25-17, 25-23, and 26-24. So, oh gosh, no, they played Navarro tough in their yeah, gym. Then man, yeah. that's that's good. But uh, but as far as the playoff race goes, I think if they can beat Poteet this uh, next Tuesday here at home. Uh, then they will secure that fourth place spot. So a well, good deal. So that'll be next Tuesday night here at, at the uh, at five and they play at five or six, they play at six, six. I guess. Freshmen play at five. JV play at five. They Sa- split at the, same, that time. at the same time. And then the varsity will play at six in the the gym here at the high school, the Roost. So uh, on the cross country front, uh, this coming uh, Monday. Uh, Monday after the weekend, just three days from now, uh, our three regional qualifiers will be running at the cross country regional cross country meet down in Corpus and Brooke Wendell, who plays second in the district meet, and along with Will Green, who plays second, and Cole Alcorn, who plays fourth. So uh, those uh, three runners have a decent uh, shot if they run well to, to maybe get to qualify to go run at the, at the state meet. Because I think it's teams, and then maybe like the top ten individuals get to go to state. So they got a shot to do that. Uh, we've got the the future Gobble cheerleaders, about fifty of them, all the way from look like three year old to about six or seven year old. They must have had cheer camp, uh, cheer camp this week. Uh, uh, Travis also mentioned in the coaches show that the Lady Gobblers uh, basketball team started practice this yep. week. Coach Amy Crane, I'm assuming Amy's doing that again. Yep. I didn't haven't talked to Amy, but. Uh, will be leading the Lady Gobblers as they start. And the boys, the boys' basketball team will start practice next week, uh, one week one week behind, behind the girls. And at the, at the junior high level, uh, they're still playing, they still playing uh, volleyball. they got a couple things to go. Uh, yeah, they got a couple more weeks to go. They'll uh, play Monday night in Lavernia in Lavernia, and then they'll finish the season the following Monday night here against Gonzalez. Yeah, they took a tough one this past week. Uh, um, uh, uh, Navarro came came to town and uh, avenged their their loss that we put on them when we went there. So they're they're doing good. They're about five hundred. That's you know, cool. Learning the game. Learning the game. So. Learning the game. So uh, 
again, about a minute 10, the junior high band helped with the high school band tonight. So a lot of green and white coming off the field at this point. But the teams are fixing to run on the field, and we'll get the second half kickoff in about two minutes after we maybe play a commercial. We will do that for you here, and then we'll be back in just a second. 48-3 to three at the half, Quero. Bush is Chicken knows its success comes from loyal customers in the communities they serve. And Bush's Chicken believes in giving back to each community where there is a Bush's restaurant. Most weeks throughout the year, Bush's Chicken is donating meals and or its famous iced tea in support of area schools and churches. During the various sports seasons, there's a good chance you'll find Bush's Chicken in the press box or the concession stands at many high school games. If you were at a game or school event and bought Bush's iced tea or tender rolls, you'll be happy to know that Bush's Chicken donates the profits to the School District Booster Club or community group. All right, folks, back here at Gobber Stadium. Uh, I want to let everybody know if, if we happen to go off the air, um, just reboot your uh, your device and uh, or refresh it. It should come back. Um, we've had some text saying you're off the air, um, but, if, but if that happens, just uh, reboot your device or, or refresh it and... Uh, Everything should be good. All right, so Gobblers are going to receive this this uh, second half kickoff. Give some shout outs right quick. Travis Zaveski out in Fort Drum. Travis, thank you for listening. Thank you for your service. We appreciate it. Do you know where Fort Drum is? Travis, if you're listening, text us back and tell us where Fort Drum is. I don't know. New York. New York? Okay, Mike, Mike knows. Way up in New York. Okay. Because before he was, I knew the first two places I think he was stationed, they were, you know, familiar names, but I don't know where Ford Drum is. I think Jordan Whittington hopes they kick it to him. He looks a little bit excited running yeah. out onto the field. Yeah, because he's uh, he's fixing to come off the field and not play very much, <laughs> much the second half. Shout out, shout out to Adolph Robinson listening to us in Lawton, Oklahoma. Adolph, thank you. We appreciate it. All right, Gobblers, uh, deep for the Gobblers is Whittington and Marcus Gomez lined up at about their 10, 12-yard line. Mike Cantu, you win the prize. Fort Drum, New York. <laughs> Thank you. Squib kick down the middle of the field. He kicked it all the way to Whittington. Oh, no. Uh, Gomez, Gomez picks it up. In front of him. Gomez picks it up, takes it around the left-hand side, down the Gobber sidelines. Got some blockers forced out of bounds at about the 39-yard line, 38-yard line. So, Gobblers will take over with pretty good field position. First and 10 from their 38. They break the huddle with uh, three receivers split to the right, one to the left. Barda in a shotgun. Moore comes into the slot. Turns and hands off to Kieran Grant. He tries to bounce it, cuts cuts up the field, gets uh, out to about the 45-yard line. I know I've said this before, but for those who are listening who are old enough to watch, you know, Pro football and college. He's he's got a lot of Barry Sanders in him. He just goes sideways. I mean, he just stops and it's like three feet to the right, and then he plants and he's already going forward again. Yeah, he he does have good, uh, good feet. Shout out to Doyle Cruz and Glithy Cruz listening to us out there. Thank y'all very much. We appreciate it. Bard and a shotgun. Uh, Lang pitched to Lang on a on a sweep around the left hand side, forced out of bounds in uh, Lano territory. A little shuffle pass shuffle to, to pass. DeAndre Lang for a first down gobblers. Ball's going to be spotted at the Lano 45-yard line. We count a pass. And it's awesome. Yes, sir. Yeah. Gobblers break the huddle with Devin Whittington to the right, Jordan and DeAndre to the left. Now DeAndre moves over to the right-hand side. Barta, here's your quarterback. Grant lined up behind him. Barta turns, hands off to Grant, up the middle. Br breaks tackles inside the 40, inside down to the 30. 
Nice run there by Kieran Grant. Yeah, he was hit in the backfield. <laughs> First down gobbers. Had a shirt in the backfield and goes from the 45 all the way down to the 31. Pick up a 14. Gobblers come to the line, two, two receivers to the right, one to the left. Now more on the left-hand side comes into a slot. Barta fakes, throws across the middle, caught by Devin Whittington. He turns upfield, down inside the 20, down inside the 15, close to about the 13-yard line. First down, Gobblers on a Barta to, to Devin Whittington pass. Shout out to my buddy Paul Harper listening to us out in Fort Worth, Texas. Paul, thank you very much. Paul was a teammate of mine back in the day. Two receivers to the left. Grant lined up next to Barta in a shotgun. Takes this, Grant takes the handoff and is met in the backfield, dropped for a loss. Good penetration there by the uh, Lano defense. And the Lano players yeah, that, slow to number get Number five, that's the one Travis uh -huh. said was their best defensive player. That they line up in multiple positions. And loss of two on that. Yep, going to bring up second and 12. Ball is spotted at the 15-yard line. Lang and Haynes to the right. Devin Whittington to the left. Now Lang moves to the other side. Barta t looks and throws across the middle. Caught by Devin Whittington. Oh, touchdown, Gobbler. That was too easy. Yeah, that wasn't anybody close to him. Went in untouched. That touchdown brought to you by Brian Gomez State Farm Insurance. Munguia set to kick the extra point. Good snap, good hold, and good kick. So with 8.38 left to go in the third quarter, the score is now Quarrow 55 to 3. Lano 3. You're listening to Gobber Football on KMAXSports.com. For over 124 years, the Quarrow record has been DeWitt County's most highly read, historically dominant, award-winning, relevant, community-serving, and supporting local sports and news source. Since 1894, the Quarrow record has been making a difference in the lives and livelihoods of the residents of DeWitt County. Call 361-275-3464 today to become a subscriber or visit DeWittCountyToday.com for more details. All right, folks, back here at Gobbler Stadium following the Devin Whittington touchdown reception. 55-3. to 8.38 left to go in the third quarter. Got a foot into that one. Fields it at the 10-yard line into the win. Tries to reverse field, got some room, cuts up middle, taken down at about the 26-yard line, 27-yard line by Lester Denby and Tyler Curley. First team defense is still out there. Lano comes out straight from the sidelines. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. Quarterback takes a snap, hands off to the running back. He's met and dropped for a big loss. Ray, that they were back there at the mess. Yeah, yeah, I know. I mean, they're 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 almost getting to him as soon. You know, kind of like a I don't want to call it his own read, but maybe you know he's he's riding the guy so to speak with 
before he decides to give it to him. And by the time he decides, they're where he is. Going to bring up second in about 13. Two to the right, one to the left. Quarterback takes a snap, looks to his left, pump fakes, pressured, throws downfield, double covered, overthrew. Yeah, way out of bounds. Jordan would have picked it if it had been in, in play. Going to bring up third and 13. Ball spotted at their own 25-yard line. They're running the clock on an incomplete pass. Oh, hmm. they must have agreed to something. Probably so Lano can get on back. So here we go, third and 13. Three receivers to the right, one to the left. Hand off to the running back. He tries to bounce it. Oh, good job. Bob. And uh, is oh, hit by about four gobblers out in the right flat. I mean, even when, even when it looks like the play is going to be something positive, it ends up being one or two, you know, one or two yards. It's just the pursuit. We have more speed. Shout out to Mark and Johnny Harvey listening to us. Thank you all very much. We appreciate it. So it's going to br bring up fourth and 11 for the Gobblers, for the uh, Yellow Jackets. Deep, deep to receive this punt is DeAndre Lang and Marcus Gomez. Good kick, fielded by Lang at the 41-yard line. Takes it up the middle, spins, gets into uh, Yellow Jacket territory down to about the 44. So the Quarrel Gobblers will start with good field position yet, yet again. And the... Michael Barta's night is over, unless he has to come punt. Quarterback now is Chase Blackwell. Chance Albright lined up behind him with two receivers split to the right. Turns and hands off to Albright over the left-hand side, following his blockers. Gets inside the 40 and tough run and forced out of bounds at the 38-yard line. So, yeah, this uh, this clock is a running clock this second half, folks. So, this uh, this thing is going to fly by. All right, yeah. Going to bring up second and four. Albright lined up to the right of, of uh, Blackwell. Takes a snap, fakes, and is met. Dropped for a five-yard, six-yard loss. And Lano is getting yeah. fired up about that, pumping their fists. That's amazing when you're down 55-3. to three. He may be their des best defensive player, but somebody needs to teach him a little football yeah. etiquette. <laughs> Third and ten. Following the sack. Shotgun formation, Blackwell. Takes a snap, rolls to his right. Looks downfield, got room, throws out on the right side, caught by D. Lang at the on the sidelines. Great uh, sideline catch, first down, Gobblers. Yeah, from the 44 down to the 32. That was a well-executed play there by Blackwell and Lang. Went two yards past the first down marker. Blackwell hit him right on the out of bounds. Wildcat formation. Kevin Smith is your quarterback. 
Lang comes in motion. Faked it. Lang, Smith keeps it himself, goes over the right-hand side and gets a couple of yards. Gets one yard, second and nine. Ball spotted at the Lano 31-yard line. Two receivers split to either side. Albright lined up behind next to Blackwell. Blackwell throws across the middle. Oh. Devin Whittington in and out of his hands. He was wide open. Yeah, he was thinking six again. <laughs> <laughs> ran, yeah. a, ran a slant route and uh, nice, nice pass. pass. Yep. Yeah, nice pass. It was on the money. Just went right through his hands. Going to bring up third and nine. Come back and run the same play again. Gobblers come to the line with two receivers split to the left, two to the right. Albright lined up behind Blackwell. Blackwell throws across the middle, high. Huh. Over Trent Haynes' head. Tried the same Hank. play again, but yep. the pass. The this, different this, receiver. Time, this time, different. the pass wasn't on the money. Going to bring up fourth and nine. Well, I guess, you know, one thing when you're ahead this much and they're, they're running the clock, they're not stopping it. There's no incentive just to run it three times and punt. Just but these guys work on things because the clock continues to roll, whether it's incomplete, complete, or out of bounds, or whatever. Shotgun formation, two receivers split to the right, one to the left. Black will turn, hands off two, all right up the middle. Still going but they're going to call him down a couple of yards short, so the ball will go over on downs. Looks like the only time they're stopping is, is on change of possession. Right. They gave him six yards on the carry, but the ball goes over. Well, with the running clock, you can make one, you can make one first down and eat up almost five minutes. Two receivers split to either side for the Yellow Jackets. Quarterback in a shotgun. Takes a snap. Looks to his right. Throws. Tip, tipped up in the air. Almost picked off by Devin Whittington. Incomplete. That ball hung in the air for a long time after he tipped it. Thought, <clears throat> thought somebody was going to get up under it. You know, one thing I was going to say earlier. You know, I think a lot of people would have thought this year coming in that our that our offense would be way ahead of our defense and I'm not saying that the offense isn't really clicking on all cylinders now but our defense has been stingy yeah they've played well to have as many new guys and new linebackers and quarterback takes a snap throws out in the left flat caught tries to make extra yardage and he's swarmed by Jackson Hardwick short gain gain of about two maybe three Two receivers to the left, one to the right. Quarterback in a shotgun. Takes a snap, fakes the handoff. Pressured, dropped. Chance Albright with the sack. And that will be the end of the, that will be the last play of the third quarter. A very quick third quarter. With uh, the Quarrel Gobblers leading 55-3. to 
You're listening to Gobbler Football on KMAXSports.com. So the ball went... High school coverage on the radio is a lot like Tinder. Hi, lover boy. One flick of the finger and we're gone. Goodbye now. The only difference is you're not going to meet your phone at the bar and go out on a date with it. You are sick. At least I hope not. I mean, come on. But I do believe it was Kevin Garnett who said... This is the KMAX Sports Network. Devon Energy is proud to support the Quarrel High School Gobblers and all DeWitt County High School athletes. From our team to yours, good luck this season, both on the field and in the classroom. Devon Energy Corporation, Eagle Ford. Vite Media is the state's most comprehensive high school sports media outlet covering UIL, private schools. Vipe has been in Texas for over a decade. Visit their website at Vipe, V-Y-P-E, Texas.com. And also pick up your Vipe magazine today. Get in the game with Vipe Media. All right, folks, back here at Gobber Stadium beginning the fourth quarter. Oh, Lano in a fourth and long for, uh, fourth situation. And fourth and 19. Deep for the Gobblers is Gomez and Lang lined up at about the 50. Wobbly short kick 13. takes a quarrel roll. Yeah, he didn't punt for a first Man. down. Oh, quarrel fielded it at the, uh, I'm sorry, Lano fielded it at the 30. So, so that's a net what, right? Fourteen yard punt <laughs> with no return. Gobbers take over with a uh, good field position. Connor Crane in the game now. One of the one of the kids they brought up from J V. Tell you what, getting the ball like that sure helps your average starting field position when you start at the other team's 30. Two receivers split to either side. <coughs> Empty backfield. Blackwell is your quarterback. Gomez goes in motion. Hands off to Gomez. He, he is bottled up and uh, reverses field. He's going to probably lose yardage here. Yep. Going to lose about six. Little shovel pass that went nowhere. I think it was an intended shuffle pass, but he uh, yeah he didn't he handed it more than uh, he shuffled. You think it. he handed it to him? Yeah. Okay. I really do. All right. So we'll go with that. Gonna bring up second and sixteen. You know, he didn't run it like Barton normally. No, runs. yeah, it, it was probably it. intended to be a a pitch. Because they just kind of tossed it up in there. Yeah, but he but just no, kind of handed, handed it to him. him. So. I was looking down right and then looked up right about the time he was running with it. Wildcat formation. Kevin Smith, who's your quarterback, keeps it himself over the right-hand side, up the middle, down uh, to about the 30. Going to bring up third and 10. Third and nine, maybe. Ten minutes left to go in the game. Gobblers up 55-3. to three. Ball spotted now at the uh, Lano 29-and-a-half yard line. Gobblers come to the line. Two receivers split to either side. Blackwell is your quarterback. Smith lined up next to him. Blackwell looks, throws hard left. Incomplete. Intended receiver was Devion Ordonez. Just uh, led him a little too much. So it's going to bring up fourth and nine. How to try a 47-yard field goal. Yeah, he He's got enough legs. Well, that's what I was fixing to. I mean, you, you got the wind behind you. Yeah. Just to see if he could do it. Empty backfield. Two receivers split to either side. Timeout gobblers. 
We'll take one, too, folks, with 9-12 left to go in the game. Coral's up 55-3. You're listening to Gobbler Football on KMAXSports.com. City Mortgage is a proud supporter of the Puero Gobblers. Branch manager Randy Smith is a longtime supporter of the Puero Gobblers. Loan officer Zach Smith is a former Puero Gobbler. Call them and they will make your home loan worry and stress-free. Give them a call at 361-576-9890 or visit them at citymortgagegroup.net. City Mortgage is a gold sponsor of the Puero Gobblers All Sports Booster Club. All right, folks, back here at Gobbler Stadium. Both teams still in their timeouts talking to their coaches on the sidelines. Gobblers come directly to the line. Three receivers split to the right, one to the left, empty backfield. Blackwell is your quarterback, shotgun. I think he goes Takes to the, the left. snap, nope. rolls to his right. He's pressured, brought down, big loss. Ball goes over on downs. He lost seven. Lost a lot. 851. Lana will take over at the 37 yard line. Two, three receivers split to the right, one to the left, quarterback in a shotgun. Takes a snap, rolls to his right, hands off to the, to the running back on a draw. Down the left-hand side into Gobbler territory. At the 35, finally brought down. Flag on the play. Sprint draw out to the right. Court, uh, running back comes uh, back around to the left and had open field, but they're bringing this thing back. Holding. This will push the Yellow Jackets back to the 27-yard 27. 27 line. Two receivers split to the right, one to the left. Quarterback hands off to the running back, up the middle, nothing doing. Taken down by number 14. J.D. Nataro, along with uh, number 69, Elijah Varnado, second and 20. Two to the right, one to the left. Takes the snap, rolls to his right. Looks downfield, throws across the middle, caught. And he's brought down and still going down inside Gobbler territory. Nice uh, second effort there by the Lano uh, wide receiver to, sh to shed those first tacklers and uh, get this thing at, down to the Gobbler 48-yard line. First down, Lano. Three to the left, one to the right. Quarterback takes a snap, drops straight back, looks. He's pressured. Got a man. Caught. Great play there by the Lano Yellow Jacket brought down at the 21-yard line. Had a, a gobbler defender draped all over him, but he still caught it. Running a crossing route over on the Lano sidelines and takes it down to the gobbler 21-yard line. Who caught that? Number six. I couldn't tell hey, you. Their right. numbers are hard to see to me. 
Three to the left, one to the right. Quarterback takes a snap, throws to the right. Caught. Gets down inside the 10-yard line. First down, Lano. So they got a little drive going here. First and ten, uh, first and goal from the seven. Six and a half minutes left to go in the game. Two receivers split to, uh, to the left, one to the right. Quarterback hands off to the running back over the left hand side. He tries to stretch it, gets around the corner, makes the pylon. Touchdown, Lano. Nice drive there by Lano to punch that thing in from seven yards out. This is a different kicker. Different kicker, yep. Number 87. Ivor Godo. I said he's Norwegian. And he hits hit, the hit. bottom upright and hits the crossbar. Yeah. So it was just a little pooch kick and uh, no good. So with 6.13 left to go in the game, that brings the score to Quarrel 55, Lano 9. We'll stay here. Again, reminder next week. Gobbers play on Thursday night in Austin. Let's see if we can find some uh, district scores, Ray. Okay. Yeah, you were, I was surprised when you said earlier that uh, – uh, Wimberley was behind to Bandera. It was 14 to 7 Bandera over Wimberley. And that was early Tw in the 28, first half. 28 21 Wimberley's up. Up, okay. Uh, oh my gosh. Navarro 80. Eastside Memorial 0. Wow. That's. Uh, those are both third quarter scores. So. Lano lines up to kick this thing off. The Norwegian going to boot it, and the, he pooches it. And uh, gobblers fall on it at about the 32-yard line. Some area scores. Ed Edna, 76. Luling, 0. Goliad, 41. Industrial, 6. Yoakum, 35. Hallettsville, 12. Gonzalez, 24. Beeville, 6. That's an upset. Yeah. Shiner... 48, Weimer 6, and Fall City 66 to 19 over Rungi. All right, Gobbers take over at their 33 yard line. And we call a timeout. We'll take one too, folks, with 612 left to go in the game. Quarrels up 55 to 19. You're listening to Gobbler Football on KMAXSports.com. Energy Waste has provided surface rental equipment to the oil field and construction industry since 1986. Energy Waste is proud to have been recognized as a three-time winner in community and social investment by South Texas Energy Economic Roundtable. Thanks. Energy Waste is a proud supporter of all Prairie ISD Thanks. athletic programs. All right, folks, they came back from that timeout pretty quick. Uh, handed, uh, handed off to... Kevin Smith, is that who it was, Ray? Yeah. Went down the left sidelines of uh, on the Lano side of the field and uh, got a big gain for a gobbler first down. Ball's going to be spotted at the Lano 46-yard line. A 21-yard run. 
by Smith. Gobblers come to the line. Two receivers split to the right. Blackwell bleeding the clock. Hands off to Smith. He bounces it around the left-hand side. Short gain. Brings up second and nine. It would be nice if we could figure out how to hang on to this for four minutes and 55 seconds with the clock running, but you have to make at least one first down for that to happen. We've already made one. We need to make another one on this drive. Gobblers come to the line. Smith lined up behind Blackwell in a shotgun. Blackwell takes a snap, turns hands off to Smith over the left-hand side. He bounces it down, gets Close to the first down marker, tripped up. They're giving it to him. <laughs> that one, the, the umpire walked to about the 37. He was going to mark it at the 37, and the other guy. Flag on the play, though. Holding offense. Man, we shoot ourselves in the foot on those, on those big runs. So this thing is coming back. Going to push, push it back into Gobbler territory at the 48-yard line. So, two, so he made it to the 42. They give him – he picks up four on the run. It's going to be second and 16. Let's see, back seven. You got three on the run. Two receivers to the right. Smith lined up behind Blackwell. Takes a snap, bobbles it, hands off to Smith. He goes nowhere. Going to be a loss on the play. Going to bring up third and long. Ball spotted at the Quero 46-yard line. A couple of these players that got moved up from JV, JV Deverick Mathis, Jalen Reeves, Cooper Bishop, Connor Crane, they're all in there. Blackwell, shotgun, takes the snap, hands off to the running back. I think that's Deverick, uh, no, that's Jalen Reeves, I believe, they, he handed it off to. Short gain. What number is he wearing, Clay? Number 10. Is that him? So. And his name is what? Because I don't want to have that afterward. Jalen? Jalen Jalen Reeves. Thank you. Gobbler punt team comes on. Barter will be your punter. Nobody deep for Lano. Be our first punt of the night. Let's see if Barta can turn one over. A wobbly kick, but it's a long kick. Oh, it's going to check gonna, out. Going to take Get a there. Oh, oh, he went out of bounds. Goes out and hit the half-yard line. <laughs> wow, what, what a what a punt. What a punt there by Michael Barta. 53, 53 yards. That's how you do it right there, folks. So Lano will take over at their half-yard line. <clears throat> Looking to go 99 and a half yards with 213 left to go in the game. Jalen Reeves. He's a JV guy they brought up because they didn't play yesterday. Gobbler defense is on the field. Two receivers split to the left, one to the right for the 
Yellow Jackets. Quarterback in a shotgun deep in the in his end zone. Takes a snap, looks to throw, throws deep down the sidelines. Caught by the the yellow jacket receiver, defended well by Tyler Villa. But big gain for the Yellow Jackets. They get out of the hole. Out to the 33-yard line. First and 10, Lano with two, uh, 147 left to go in the game. Two to the left, one to the right. Shotgun formation. Quarterback fakes the handoff. Throws out in the right flat. Wide open, number 12. Down the sidelines, forced out of bounds. Into Gobbler Terror. Nope. Just short of uh, the 50-yard line. First and 10, Lano. Two receivers split to either side in a shotgun formation. Quarterback takes a snap, looks to throw out in the right, left flat, caught, forced out of bounds at about the 41-yard line. Ethan Tisdale makes that catch. And flag on the play. Okay, so there's a fifth personal foul on number 63 for Quero, Will Tarasas, who is now on the gobbler sidelines getting an earful from Coach Reeve. That's uncalled for in a game like this, 55-9. to nine. Didn't see what happened. Did you, Ray? No, I guess it's just kind of like a late hit on the quarterback maybe. I don't know. So the ball has moved all the way down to the 27. Coro 27. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. Lano looking to put some more points on the board. Takes a snap, drops straight back, looks downfield, throws into the end zone. Incomplete. Oh, good, defense. good defense. Good defense there by, who's that, number 20? I'd like to give him some credit if he turned his jersey so, this way some. That's number number 21, I think, Tyler Villa. Oh, that's amazing. Number 28, I'm sorry. Quarterback rolls to his right, throws into the end zone, incomplete. Tyler Villa. Was the uh, defender on that one. Nice play there. It's amazing. And they stopped the clock. Yeah, well, they stopped it after the last incompletion. They ran it They ran it the whole second half. Until yeah. Until <laughs> bounds, yeah. But the, the, the incomplete pass down here in the end zone, they stopped it. I guess you, they're stopping it inside a minute. I don't know. Yeah, who knows. Three receivers to the right, one to the left. Lano quarterback takes a snap. Is pressured, throws a little uh, screen pass to the running back. He's at the 20. He's at the 10. Brought down. Nice play there by number 19, uh, Trey McNary. Saved a touchdown. That must be the deal, Ray. Inside a minute with of the fourth quarter, they stop it. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. Lano takes a, oh. takes a snap, looks to throw. He keeps it himself inside the five, hit hard at the one. Gonna be short. Oh, that's <laughs> gonna be short, and then Lano is calling the timeout. I'm sorry, but that's I mean, I know we're up fifty five to nine, but that's poor sportsmanship, I think, on Lano's part when you call timeout. I mean, everything's been done to let you try to score, and you don't score, and they're running the clock, and we're playing JV guys, and you're gonna call timeout. Hey, they're they're trying to <laughs> they're trying to get some points on the board. I can understand. A reads for Quero R E E 
J A L J A L E N R E E B E S with an S on the end of Reeves. So with 15 seconds left to go in the game, Lano is at the uh, one yard line. Looking to add to their nine. Gobbler defense gets instructions from uh, coaching staff. Empty backfield, two to the left, two to the right. Quarterback in a shotgun. Running back goes in motion. Quarterback rolls to his right. Got a man wide open. Touchdown. Touchdown, Casey, uh, Case Kirkendall, number 12. Ivor Godo set to kick the extra point. Good snap. That one's a little better. And it's good. So with 11 seconds left to go, the score is 55 to 16 in favor of the Gobblers. For this to be a running clock, this is the longest one minute. No, no, they've stopped it some. They didn't stop it some. They called timeout. Uh, wow. Deep for the Gobblers is Marcus Gomez. Take that back. Jacob Cuellar. Think they're gonna onside kick it, Ray? <laughs> That's amazing. I'm sorry, I wasn't there radio. Nope, he squibs it right down the middle. Fielded by Trey McNary. Let the clock run out, man. Nine seconds, folks. Gobblers will uh, take over. I guess there's moral victories. I'm sorry, I can hear their radio crew, but they're talking about how they've outscored us 16 to seven in the in the second half. Mm, okay. <laughs> uh. Blackwell in a shotgun formation takes the snap and takes a knee, and Yay. that's going to be the last play of the game. Gobblers win 55 to 16. Go go to two and zero in district and uh, six and one overall. Stay tuned. We'll have some stats for you in a minute if uh, Ray can uh, write fast enough. <laughs> You're listening to Gobbler Football on KMAXSports.com. This is Colt Reeve. Just as the Quarrel Fighting Gobblers are deep in tradition, so is KN Driving. Family owned and operated since 1960, KN has been serving up the best homemade hamburgers, enchiladas, and burritos along with frosty mugs of KN Root Beer. Open Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. It is oh so fun and oh so good. KN Drive-In, 514 East Broadway in Quero. Come see them in person. Give them a call at 
1-800-273-1371 or order online at kndriving.com. Go Gobblers! Energy Waste has provided surface rental equipment to the oil field and construction industry since 1986. Energy Waste is proud to have been recognized as a three-time winner in community and social investment by South Texas Energy Economic Roundtable. Energy Waste is a proud supporter of all Pro ISD athletic programs and all of the supporting organizations and would like to remind you, once a gobbler, always a gobbler. Lance Tire Service is your one-stop shop for tires, brakes, alignments, and general automotive repair. They offer 24-hour road service for passenger vehicles, light trucks, agricultural, ATVs, industrial, and light commercial. They've moved to a new location, 1003 West Heaton on Highway 72 in Quero. Stop by and visit with Clayton and Clifford. Their friendly staff is always ready to assist you with any questions you may have. If nothing else, stop by to visit with Clayton's trusty dog, Cleo. Check out their website at lancetireservice.net. You can get a quote, see promotions, shop tires, and look at services offered. Lance Tire is a proud gold sponsor of the Quero Gobblers All Sports Booster Club. Give them a call at 361-275-2387. Lance Tire Service. Anytime, anywhere. We'll be there. Bush's Chicken knows its success comes from loyal customers in the communities they serve. And Bush's Chicken believes in giving back to each community where there is a Bush's restaurant. Most weeks throughout the year, Bush's Chicken is donating meals and or its famous iced tea in support of various schools and churches. During the various sports seasons, there's a good chance you'll find Bush's Chicken in the press box or the concession stands at many high school games. If you were at a game or school event and bought Bush's iced tea or tender rolls, you'll be happy to know that Bush's Chicken donates the profits to the School District Booster Club or Community Group. For over 40 years, the Quero All Sports Booster Club has been there to support all CISD athletics. The Quero All Sports Booster Club raises money throughout the year to assist the athletes in golf, volleyball, tennis, track and field, football, baseball, softball, and cross country. The Booster Club donates over $20,000 each year to support the athletes. Whether it's uniforms, sports equipment, or ice machines, the Quero All Sports Booster Club is there. The Quero All Sports Booster Club meets every Wednesday at Davis Contractors, located on FM 236. Become a member and help us help our kids. We hope you're enjoying tonight's broadcast. And while all of us at the KMAC Sports Network are huge football fans, we broadcast more than just football, you know. In fact, KMAX Sports proudly broadcasts volleyball, girls and boys basketball, softball, baseball, soccer, lacrosse, and more. For more information on how you can help KMAX Sports broadcast any of those sports, just reach out to Chuck at KMAXSports.com or Merle at KMAXSports.com or contact that Sports Booster Club directly. KMAX Sports will gladly work with you and the Booster Clubs to get that team's broadcasts on the air. And if you're a fan of the other team, well, we can broadcast your team's games too. We realize that, yes, even in Texas, there's more to life than just football. KMAX Sports, bringing your teams to you for 14 years. Titan Electric specializes in construction and electrical work, residential, commercial, and industrial construction. New homes, remodels, add-ons, and more. They can build homes from the ground up. Titan Electric. Call 512-720-1189 or find them on Facebook as Titan Electric of Quero, Texas. Titan Electric, proud sponsor of Quero Gobbler Athletics. Go Mean Green! City Mortgage is a proud supporter of the Quero Gobblers. Branch manager Randy Smith is a longtime supporter of the Quero Gobblers. Loan officer Zach Smith is a former Quero Gobbler. Call them and they will make your home loan worry and stress free. Give them a call at 361-576-9890 or visit them at citymortgagegroup.net. City Mortgage is a gold sponsor of the Quero Gobblers All Sports Booster Club. 
Black Media is the state's most comprehensive high school sports media outlet covering UIL, private schools. Vipe has been in Texas for over a decade. Visit their website at Vipe, B-Y-P-E, Texas.com. And also pick up your Vipe magazine today. Get in the game with Vipe Media. When your AC stops working, it doesn't care what time it is. Call GBEC Home for emergency AC repair day and night. GBEC has over 40 years of experience in air conditioning service, plus fully stocked high wear parts and background check professionals you can trust in your home. Serving your needs 24 hours per day, 7 days per week is what we do. Call 800-328-0630. Texas AC License, B016098E. For over 124 years, the Pro Record has been DeWitt County's most highly read, historically dominant, award-winning, relevant, community-serving, and supporting local sports and news source. Since 1894, the Quero Record has been making a difference in the lives and livelihoods of the residents of DeWitt County. Call 361-275-3464 today to become a subscriber or visit DeWittCountyToday.com for more details. Energy Waste has provided surface rental equipment to the oil field and construction industry since 1986. Energy Waste is proud to have been recognized as a three-time winner in community and social investment by South Texas Energy Economic Roundtable. Energy Waste is a proud supporter of all Quero ISD athletic programs and all of the supporting organizations and would like to remind you, once a gobbler, always a gobbler. Hello, this is head coach Travis Reed with the Quero Gobblers. You're listening to Gobbler Football on KMAC Sports. Devon Energy is proud to support the Quero High School Gobblers and all DeWitt County High School athletes. From our team to yours, good luck this season, both on the field and in the classroom. Devon Energy Corporation, Eagle Ford. High school coverage on the radio is a lot like Tinder. Hi, lover boy. One flick of the finger and we're gone. Goodbye now. The only difference is you're not going to meet your phone at the bar and go out on a date with it. You are sick. At least I hope not. I mean, come on. But I do believe it was Kevin Garnett who said, This is the KMAX Sports Network. We hope you're enjoying tonight's broadcast. And while all of us at the KMAC Sports Network are huge football fans, we broadcast more than just football, you know. In fact, KMAC Sports proudly broadcasts volleyball, girls and boys basketball, softball, baseball, soccer, lacrosse, and more. For more information on how you can help KMAC Sports broadcast any of those sports, just reach out to chuck at kmacsports.com or merle at kmacsports.com or contact that sports booster club directly. KMAC Sports will gladly work with you and the booster clubs to get that team's broadcasts on the air. And if you're a fan of the other team, well, we can broadcast your team's games too. We realize that, yes, even in Texas, there's more to life than just football. KMAC Sports, bringing your teams to you for 14 years. All right, all right, folks, we're back here at Gobbler Stadium. Uh, the final 55 to 16 in favor of the Gobblers. Ray, what do you what, what do you have? 69. Well, uh, it's kind of little. The, the ending stats are going to look a little bit misleading to a certain extent. But totals: uh, Quero first downs 20, Lano nine. Seven of those nine came after basically the. I'm gonna say probably half JV, half third team. You know what I'm saying? Defense. Uh, all of those, all of those seven first downs in the second half by Lano were after, were in the fourth quarter. Yeah. Uh, but to rushing, Quero, 32 carries for 260, uh, 160 yards passing, so total of 420. Lano, 25 carries for just 40 yards and 154 passing. And of that, of that 154, uh, 140 of that came in the last six minutes. You thought I'm saying last six minutes of the game. So uh, individually for the Gobblers, uh, 
on the ground. Kieran had 10 for 89. Jordan Whittington, 3 for 90. Chance Albright, 8 for 73. Uh, and uh, leading receivers, Whittington, 2 for 48. Jordan Whittington, Devin Whittington had 4 for 52. And DeAndre Lang, uh, 3 for 25. Trey Moore, 1 for 33. So, I mean, it could have been, you know, 80 to 3 if it had wanted to be. But uh, a lot of kids got to play. That's important. Never know when that's going to come in come in handy. We, any other finals from the other other district ball games? And you don't have to look at. I just don't know if you knew anything. No, but uh, they were pretty much. Uh, I'm sure, like you said, it was 80 to nothing. Navarro over Eastside, and Wimberley was up 28 to 21, I believe, against uh, against Bandera. Um, 28 27, Wimberley over Bandera with uh, seven minutes left to go in the fourth quarter. Okay. So. And uh, 87 to zero in favor of uh, Navarro over Eastside. So um, that game's a final. Ours is a final. And uh, we're just waiting to see what that Wimberley Bandera game ends up. That uh, that's interesting right there. Yep. So in any event, a really good showing by the Gobblers tonight. Uh, you know, I think until. They ran the clock in the second half, uh, except when Lano was trying to score. Uh, and then, uh, you know, I think when you had your, your you know, first units in, it was pretty much clicking on all cylinders. Folks, we appreciate you listening. Uh, remember, next Thursday, not next Friday. So uh, if you can't make it to the game, tune in to us next Thursday. Right. Ray, you got anything no, else? No, we'll, we'll – See you. See you next week, Thursday night from Austin. All right. Thanks, folks. Good night, everybody. This has been the Gobbler Sports Network broadcast of Quero Football. Brought to you by Energy Waste of Quero. Energy Waste Rental Equipment for the Eagleford Shale. This broadcast is copyright property of the Gobbler Sports Network. All rights reserved.